firm. And the UCLA Bruins will open this way. Matt Stevens at quarterback, 6'1", 190. The running backs will be Gaston Green, 5'11", 190, sophomore. Mel Farr, yep, another son, 6'4", 215, a sophomore. The wide receivers, and this is the dandy, Mike Sherrard, 185, 6'2", and Carl Durrell, the flanker, 6-footer, 190, a junior from San Diego, and here comes the Bruins to the ball. Over the ball at center, Joe Goebel, and young Matt Stevens gets the call this week to start the ball game in place of David Norrie, who started last week. Stevens turns, takes the ball to the tailback, keeps it, looks down the middle, throws to his tight end, Derek Tunnell, and Tunnell pulls it down at about the 28-yard line. Tunnell is 6'5", 235, the man who just caught it. Robert Cox, a tackle, 260. Mike Hartmeyer, guard, at 265. Joe Goebel, a center, at 260. Jim McCullough, the other guard, 260. And Russ Warnick, a tackle, 255. It'll be second down, call it two, for the UCLA Bruins as they throw on first down. And not many people expected that. Stevens gives to Green. Green caught in the backfield. Great diving tackle by number 59, Mark Povanic. And here's the defensive alignment by Tennessee. Three-man front. Robbie Scott, Fred Bennett, and Mark Povanic. The backers are Ty Robinson, Kelly Zeger, Darren Miller, Dale Jones. The secondary is Terry McDaniel, Tommy Sims, Chris White, and Vic Peppers. And they've got some people hurt who will be playing later in the season. It is third down and uh, about three now for UCLA. A loss of the yard on the last play, and it's a double tight end alignment for the Bruins. Tennessee stacks inside. Green slants off tackle, breaks into the clear, and he is long gone. PD UCLA. They caught Tennessee stunning in the middle. They split him outside. Gaston Green has great speed, and he flew 72 yards, and UCLA is on the board, and that will have some impact on the noise of 91,000 people. Here is an All-American record setter, John Lee. 70 consecutive extra points in his career at UCLA. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So it didn't take long after 13 minutes and 39 seconds of the first quarter. The UCLA Bruins are out to a 7-0 lead. On the bottom of your screen, number 81, Tunnell, makes the key block on the sweep when the ball carries, starts wide, then he cuts back inside. As Keith already said, Tennessee was in a blitzing, gapping defense. Everybody was walled off. Gets the green run, 72 yards. Same. Here's the key block by number 81. He has to, his assignment is to, su to sustain his block. Right there on the defensive end, Robinson. Get up in him, stay with him, keep your feet going. Just a good block, and finally turn him to the outside, and Green cuts inside for the touchdown. Once he broke into the clear, there was nobody around going to run him down, because once he broke into the clear, he did it so suddenly, he was 10 yards out and gone. Gaston Green had a great finishing season last year, 144 yards in the game against Miami in the Fiesta Bowl. He 72-yard touchdown run there also. BYU played him wide last week, forced everything into the middle on the ground, and he didn't get a whole lot, but he certainly improved his stats so far. This is a kickoff. Jim Bray kicked seven times last week. None were returned, but his first one today will be. It is Pete Fanuska who brings the football back to about the 19-yard line. And Tennessee will open this way with Tony Robinson, 6'3", 185, a senior. Over 2,000 yards a year ago, Charles Wilson, a 205-pound sophomore, is the tailback. And Big Sam Henderson, 250-pound fullback. The wide people, Tim McGee, the leading receiver, 5'10", 180. Eric Swanson, 5'11", and 185, the split in. But we'll see a variety of wide receiver people today, including, as I said a few minutes ago in the pregame program, Sam Grady, the silver medalist at 100 meters in the Olympic game. All right, Robinson back, and he's going to throw on the first play of the ball game, and he's got a man wide open. It is Tim McGee, first down, Tennessee at the 49. What a great execution on the first play. 
continues to go in motion. <clears throat> he's going to go down, and then he breaks to the outside in behind the front cover. He's wide open. Robinson lays the ball out there perfectly. A beautiful catch by McGee, who had 54 receptions last year. Johnny Major says, Keith, he's the best receiver they've had at Tennessee. That's big words. The ball is just short of midfield with Panuska lined up at the tailback position instead of Wilson. They send McGee in motion and give the ball to the up man, the big back, 250-pounder. And Sam Henderson from South Bend, Indiana. Hammers in there for about five. Jeff Smith tight end, 6'3", 235. David Douglas, 265 at tackle. Galbraith weighs 260 at guard. The center is 255. Kirk. Uh, John Bruin, 275 at guard. Bruce Wilkinson, 260 at tackle. And uh, there are no, there's only one senior along that offensive front uh, amongst the uh, big guys from tackle to tackle. Charles Wilson now is back in at tailback for Tennessee on second down and five. Robinson, a little quick pop. They've got him set up on a screen over there. It is Joey Quickscale. And Quickscale gets the Tennessee first down and the ball in expression. He thought he could have gone all the way. They'll put him down at the 24-yard line. This is something Tennessee likes to use. A flank or screen. Take away from the top of your screen. Get the defense moving this way. Then throw the ball right out on the line of scrimmage. Picking up the block of the lineman. A good wall of blockers. And number 87, Clay Scale, is mad because he tripped. Volunteers trying to answer UCLA's opening first. Bruins out on top, 7-0 on a 72-yard run by Gaston Green. First down, Tennessee, UCLA 24. And here goes Wilson, the tailback. And he slashes over the right side and picks up nine yards. And the ball's rolling around loose. And UCLA's got it. So Wilson, a big hole over the right side. But he was hit late. The ball came loose and looked like Mark Whalen covered it. Often, when a ball carries fighting for extra yards, the ball pops out. You can see that Wilson puts his hand over the ground and doesn't protect the ball. It pops out. UCLA recovers. We'll be right back. Temple Owls told you last week they were going to be a pretty good football team. They're making a game of it with Penn State. Right now, the UCLA Bruins with Tennessee turning it over at their own at uh, UCLA's 15. Bruins will take it there and go the other way. They scored quickly the first time they had it. Stevens takes the ball to the tailback. Goes deep down the middle for Strillard. It is incomplete. Double coverage. And the Bruins are lucky to get that one back. As we can see, Sherrod, number 82, is going to go deep inside. The quarterback was trying to look number seven, the safety man, away from the play. But White, a senior, was not to be denied. He came across and made the play along with the right half back. Davis, the starting uh, free safety, is injured. White is playing for really the first time. The only time he's played is on special teams. So Homer Smith has planted that seed in the mind of the Tennessee defenders now. And Stevens gives the ball to Green, and Green is all down as he tries to cut back against the grain and they get him at about the 18-yard line. Terry Donahue, at age 32, succeeded Dick Vermeil, and if he wins this game today, as we told you, he becomes the all-time winning coach at UCLA with 73 wins. Third down at about seven. Tennessee defenders jumping around. Stevens back to throw. Looks and goes on the ground. Pass intended for Sherrard. He was getting some pressure. And when he let it go, he had to hurry the throw. And it was incomplete. Temple gets now to within two of Penn State on a safety. Now the Bruins will kick. And uh, Ted Henderson, a redshirt senior from Albuquerque, had a very good ball game last week in the mountain air of the Wasatch Mountains of Utah averaging over 42 yards per kick. The deep man is Tim McGee for Tennessee. Tim McGee's a flower. Balls go after him. He gets the kick away. Ball hangs and McGee comes up from the fair catch and receives the ball just inside the UCLA 48-yard line. 
So the volunteers get it back in field position. Broke his coaches. Completion percentage mark last year in his junior year. Now he's got some field position to start from. The UCLA is close to the 47. They seem to be on their way a while ago in the first possession until Wilson fumbled the ball. They threw on first down in the first snap. And they won it this time. So right back to Wilson to give him a little confidence, and he's going to pick up three, four yards on the carry. Terry Taylor. Second leading tackler, number 42 for UCLA, plays that middle linebacker position mostly. All he has to do is watch the tailback and try to move over and whip the blocker on this one. Makes an outstanding play and get some help from Chucky Miller, number 37. He's from Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee, who went west. And uh, he says sometimes he goes home to Chattanooga and he thinks people work hard at ignoring him. But he's a good football player. He's a very good football player. He's second down and six, and uh, Robinson back to throw, has all day, and he throws the ball wide of his mark. Wilson, the tailback, coming out of the backfield, was there, but Robinson didn't get him. Defensively for UCLA, the three big guys down are Batchkoff, Toomey, and Whalen. Uh, Jackson, Smith, Jarecki, and Taylor, the backers. And the secondary, Miller, Henley, Rutledge, and Washington. And you will hear Washington's name before the day is over. He's a good one. Washington's just a sophomore, but as a freshman, Keith, he led the team in tackles from his safety position. It is third and six now for Tennessee. Ball on the UCLA 44. Robinson kept it on option and good defensive play as he is stopped by Eric Smith for a little gain. Now let's join Jim Lampley. Keith, it is over now at University Park, Pennsylvania, where again, Temple threw a scare into a better-known team. The Owls got a touchdown from John Palmer and a two-point conversion with just a little bit more than two and a half minutes left. But the Nittany Lions, with fullback Steve Smith handling the ball, ran out the clock, and they won it 27-25. Back to Keith Jackson. Joe's had two cliffhangers in a row, hasn't he? He had to to bed early tonight. Well, here is Bob Garman now, in, entering as Tennessee's punter, succeeding Jimmy Colquitt, and he spins it up into the air, and it's a tail dragger and kicked right on into the end zone, and so the ball will come back out to about to the 20-yard line. It's a 43-yard punt. Maryland came on late in the ball game to rumble over Boston College. So the Eagles now are 0-2, and up at Morgantown, uh, West Virginia leading Duke by eight. Keith, we can expect from UCLA power running plays and play action passes most of the time. They believe in trying to control that football in that manner. Marcus Greenwood is in at fullback now, replacing Mel Farr. He had a big game at BYU, picked up more than 70 yards. They go back to the tailback green, and green is nailed down after a one-yard pickup at the 21-yard line. We've got 9.15 to play in the first quarter, and the Bruins leading 7-0 over Tennessee. Michigan State now still holding on to their lead, and Auburn begins to stretch it out a bit at halftime over Southern Miss. What was it you said uh, that uh, uh, Barnhill used to tell you about scoring so many points early? Oh, in that first ball game, he said, Frank, don't score so many. Save them. You're going to need them down the way. And he was right, too. He scored 60 points in one game and seven the second game. Don't let him think scoring is easy. That's right. Don't let him think you can get scores any time you want to. They're hard to come by. Tough game. Second down and nine. Matt Stevens back to throw. Goes to the man out of the backfield. That's the fullback, Marcus Greenwood. And Greenwood takes the lick right at the marker. He's close to the first down. Good execution on the part of Stevens. He, he wanted to go deep on the play action fake, but Greenwood was is the layoff man out in the flat in case he cannot go to the end deep for the first down. And a good quick snap release by Stevens right into the hands of Greenwood. Good tackle coming up number eight, Peppers. Just short of the first down. I think that's an example, though, of why Stevens is probably going to be the quarterback of UCLA. He is quick, he reads quickly, and he makes quick decisions. Perfect. He has Quarterback sneak, diving for the first down, and they're going to give it to him just over the 30. That is so important, what you mentioned, of the quick decisions. You have just a second to identify the defense off that play action, action pass, and you've got to get the ball to the open receiver. Stevens was very impressive in the Brigham Young last week in, in the second half. Tennessee hurrying to get a new defender into the ball game. 
And will probably change the defense a little bit as UCLA comes up now on first down, just over the 30-yard line, leading 7-0 in the first quarter. And Stevens still got it, rolls it out now, and whips it to the sidelines as the pass is complete to Carl Durrell. Six-footer, 190. He was on the sidelines and going right on out of bounds. He had no place to go. But again, you see the quick release and strong arm of Stevens. Next week, these are the possibilities here on ABC. Notre Dame, Michigan State at South Bend or South Carolina hosting Michigan. And what swings that is the outcome of the Notre Dame, Michigan game up in Ann Arbor. It's second down and two for UCLA. Pick data on that last play. Tailback, Green, outside he goes. Gets the first down. Oh, boy. Boy, he, you're not going to arm tackle him, I'll tell you right now. And he ran right through two arms on that play. Let's go back and talk a little bit about Curtis Green. He was just a freshman last year, went into the Southern Cal game, made 130, rushed for 134 yards, came into the Fiesta Bowl and rushed for 144 yards. Today, he has 83 yards and five carries. One of them, of course, a 72-yard sprint for a touchdown. First down, Bruins. Ball just over the 45. Boy, going first down. Down the line comes Stevens. Pitches the ball back to Green. Green drops it. Scramble for it. Tennessee looks like they've got it. They do. Number 96. Tyrone Robinson comes out of it. Fundamental mistake on Green's part. The lateral was being pitched to him, and he looked at the defense, took his eyes off the ball, fumbled it, Tennessee got it back, and a break for them. With 7.03 to go in the first quarter, UCLA has now turned it over, and Tennessee has the ball first down at the Bruins' 45. nothing. Bruins lead. Robinson, the quarterback. Howard in at fullback. Another big 225. Spread them out. Move them around. That's what they're trying to do to UCLA and give the ball to Howard coming off injury. His first action really of the fall. Again, let's go to Jim. Up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Keith, the Michigan Wolverines had temporarily taken the lead over Notre Dame on a Harbaugh run. It was 10-9 at that point, but now Carney has come back with his fourth field goal of the game, and for the moment, still in the third quarter, it is the Irish 12 and Michigan 10. Back to Knoxville. Well, that sounds exciting. Keith, look how wide the receivers are. You can see how Tennessee spreads the defense sideline to sideline. Back goes Robinson to throw, swings it out. Wilson's got it. Slips and falls at the 40. He had his first down, I think, or close to it, but he lost his footing when he tried to make the cut on the inside. Well, look at here. Wes. Steve Sloan says he's got a much better team this year. It's going to be tougher at Duke. And there's your final score with Michigan State winning and Air Force and Wyoming now. The Wyoming wishbone getting the lead there. Delaware is leading Navy. And old Tubby. That's the Tubby Raymond. Mud hens working here. What they call them? Uh, mud hens and mud hens. That's yeah. correct. Robinson gives the ball to Wilson. The tailback that he squirts through there. They'll need one more yard for the first down. They were at third and five. Now they're looking at fourth and one. And all the players are saying, let's go for it. All the stands are yelling, let's go for it. But be careful, Majors. I'm telling you, you don't make it. You're the bum. But I believe they're going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, he's ending Henderson, number 43. The 250-pound fullback comes into the ball game, and they're going to go on fourth down. And you know what? It's a, at least it's a good yard and a half. At least. You're right. A good yard and a half. Line up tight inside to set up a power hour situation. And give it to the big man, the fullback, and he did not make it. Sam Henderson did not make the first down. Nowhere near run close, Keith. UCLA got right under the boxes. The key to stopping short yards, see if we can tell the defensive lineman, getting underneath. The key man is over to the left. That's tough. Gets the penetration. Then 41 Miller comes in, fills the hole right there. Beautiful. Kenny Norton. Number Kenny Norton, 41. I mean. 41. Kenny Norton. Great play so, on their part. Uh, Johnny Majors in Tennessee takes a gamble. Bruins turn it away, and UCLA gets the ball back at their own 36. 
the Tennessee offense opened strong or seemed to be on their way for a touchdown but they've had it twice since and the offense is the movement of the ball by the Tennessee offense is getting shorter and shorter and now UCLA takes over at the 36 and Eric Ball in the backfield as Stevens comes out on the option throws to Mike Gerard and completes to Mike up around the 45 yard line Eric Ball the tailback 6'1 215 a red shirt freshman from Ypsilanti Michigan Gerard runs the better than the 4-4 in the 40 he is caught in 25 this makes the 25th straight game he's caught two or more passes just a consistent performer and Keith surprisingly he was a walk on now remember we saw him in the UCLA Georgia game about three years ago and he had a big ball game in Athens so they lost the game and he's been very very consistent to change across the field to see whether or not they have the first and they do not time remaining 4 5 4 first quarter Tennessee has not been terribly successful over the last seven years in their home openers in the main because they have gone out and stuck their head out there in the opening game against tough people. They're only one out of seven. The feet look at what they Tennessee's got faced them after this game. They've got number two ranked Auburn. They've got uh, Alabama and they've got number three ranked Florida in the next uh, four weeks. So they a win today would uh, give them a big boost. They've got some tough games ahead of them. It's second down and about a foot. Quarterback Stevens has the first down. Surge on the right side uh, behind McCullough and Warnick. And he had plenty of room. He moved it out to the 42 or 47, rather. Washington BYU underway and the Cougars as usual get on top. Washington doesn't get out of easy after this one either. The Huskies have to go to Houston and play Houston down there. It'll be three games in a row in the road for them. This is ball. And ball just accepts the ball and goes straight ahead and gets to midfield as we again go to Jim. This at Morgantown, West Virginia, a surprisingly rough day for the West Virginia Mountaineers, a surprisingly good day for Steve Sloan and Duke. The Blue Devils missed a two-point conversion, which would have tied the game with 29 seconds left. The second failed two-pointer in the fourth quarter for them, barely losing to West Virginia, 20 to 18. Back to Keith Jackson. And second down, eight. Seven and a half, if you like. From midfield for UCLA, Stevens to throw. Whips it over to the number 81, Pinnell, making his second catch of the ball game. The tight end drifting to the sidelines, and he makes the catch down at the Tennessee 41. Pinnell, the tight end, caught uh, 23 passes last year. He was a fullback in high school, has 4-5 speed, and when you have that kind of receiver tight end, you want to get him across, working on the linebackers. He just is a mismatch there. He's wide open for the completion. Matt Stevens now is at four in a row. He's final out of seven for 45 yards. The scoring first was a 72-yard run by Gaston Green. Seven nothing UCLA, and they're now beginning to mount another threat. As Stevens rolls it out, throws to the sidelines. The pass is caught by Mike Gerard. He's thrown out of bounds. They've got another first down at the Tennessee 26-yard line. Beautiful signal calling is by the UCLA staff, Sherrod number 82. Outstanding. The coaches say that he runs such precise routes. He has the speed and all that, but he just sets up the defenders where they have no idea where he's going. That's a perfect example of how open he can be in the secondary. Mel Farr comes back in at fullback now. Ball down at the 26. The crowd trying to get into the act a little bit. Make some noise for Stevens and company. Give it a ball. Ball goes over the bottom. Rolling around, did it get out of bounds? I think it went out of bounds. Yeah. For a couple of you. Orange shirts over there, but they couldn't get a handle on it. Ball number 21 is going to get a trying to run over his own blocker far, and the ball just pops out. The last if the offensive team has possession of the ball and it's not doesn't make a difference who touches it. 
The Bruins now call a timeout. The loss on the play takes them back to the 28-yard line. They'll be looking at second down and 12 with three minutes and 16 seconds to play in the first quarter, leading 7-0. But when you get this close to the goal line, uh, anywhere inside of a 50-yard field goal, and perhaps even beyond it, they become still a scoring possibility with, with John Lee standing over there. On ABC's NFL Monday Night Football this coming Monday, it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers who open big against Cleveland. And no, I don't expect you'll be seeing uh, Mr. Kozar. I don't think Bernie's ready to probably to play as yet. And then Thursday, another Thursday night presentation matching uh, the Minnesota Vikings. But Grant back in, upset San Francisco last week, going against the Chicago Bears, who had a relatively easy win. Matt Stevens, the quarterback, looking at second and 12. Here's what his coach has to say, Terry Donahue. This is his opportunity. Last week he was our relief uh, quarterback and did a nice job coming in off the bench against BYU. And uh, I'm going to switch the roles of the two players this week and let Matt get the starting call. And if the team doesn't move or doesn't generate enough yardage or points for whatever reason, I'm going to go to David Norrie, who started last week, and ask him to come off the bench and try to generate the offense. Right now, Stevens is doing just fine. Green is back in at tailback. Here's the blitz. it away. That could get you a flag, couldn't it? Yes, it could. The official did not call it. Very questionable. There was not a white shirt within 18 yards of the ball. Quarterback was retreating Stevens when he threw the ball, and he couldn't get enough velocity behind it to get it close to the receiver. I'm sure that's what the official uh, interpreted, how he interpreted it. Got a mixed crew. You got four SEC and three Pac-10. LSU pulled it out against North Carolina 23-13. They were tied at 13 apiece late in the third quarter. Third down and 12 now. Blitz again. He went to a long count. They pick him up pretty well. Stevens now can't find anybody. Pulls it down and picks off. And is ridden out of bounds about the 22 and so the Tennessee defense stands up pretty well under that pressure as Dale Jones made the stop and here comes Mr. Lee. What a story Mr. Lee is too Keith. Unbelievable accuracy. Something like 81 percent for his career. Well inside 40 he is 42 out of 43. The T is put down at the 29 so he's inside 40. 39-yard try. The holder is David Clinton. The snapper is Terry Theodore. Theodore has snapped the ball on every one of his kicks during Lee's career. And it's plenty of leg, and it's down the pipe. I mean, he just nailed it right down the middle. <laughs> John doesn't worry a whole lot about uh, the wind and Kentucky windage and all those kind of things. He says, I just hit it as hard as I can right down the middle and most of the time the ball has perfect end over end action he is quite remarkable so he has given ucla a 10 nothing lead he's had tremendous success even since he was a freshman he had unbelievable numbers in his freshman year and has continued to improve if that be possible well he's almost certain to finish as the most accurate kicker in ncaa history Looking at other scores, and uh, Jim told you a while ago, West Virginia Duke is now final. First month of the season, always rife with upsets. So much uncertainty when you coach your start this season. Keith, there's so much parity in college football today. Someone was telling me that the seventh game, seven games is the longest winning streak in college today, and only four other teams have four games in a winning streak, and everybody else is less than four all over the country. That's parity. Jim Bray is out to kick off. Hits this one a little harder and hooks it toward the corner of the end zone, and there will be no return on this one. As Panuska watched it, is, I think Pete probably thought it was going to go out of bounds, but it held the line, and it'll come back to the 20. He kicked that into the wind. When he gets it with the wind, I don't believe that Tennessee will have a chance to return. It's a big advantage to have a place kicker that after you score, kicks the ball over the goal what line. What do you think about, uh, some people are talking about putting the ball on the 35. I don't know why we don't, Keith. I've advocated that for years and years and years, and for some reason, we're reluctant to do it. I think we don't want to copy the pros. 
but we should do it in my judgment. I think we will. From the 20, here come the volunteers down 10 nothing with Howard and Wilson lined up and Robinson to throw. There's some of his quickness and agility. His pass is away now, and the pass is complete. And it's good up to the 34-yard line. Jeff Smith, the tight end, showed you some moves right there. Well, Jeff Smith caught 26 passes last year. He's vital, key, important in this passing game of Tennessee. But this is what Robinson does so well. He's quick, can run. Throw on the run, find the receiver. This is took a perfect throw, Keith. Mm -hmm. I mean, a perfect throw for the reception. Smith pulls it in. 14-yard pickup, first down ball. They're on 34. <laughs> Robinson looking to throw again. Going deep. Pass intended for McGee, defended by Chucky Miller. Heck of a play by Miller. Miller is 5'9", and McGee 5'10", so their size was relative. Well, McGee runs faster than, uh, than a 4'4 in the 40, but it's perfectly played by 37 Miller. Running step to step with him. Now they look up for the ball together, and it's important is who gets the leap, who can jump the highs. Miller just into the ball and gets his hands up at the seat. Just enough. And just enough to deflect it out of the reach of McGee. And it's second down and ten. That was a good example of Robinson's strong arm. He pretty good foot race when it was. Go again. Now he starts rolling around, pulls it down, and gets it up to the 39 yard line. Boy, he's dangerous, Steve. When he gets that ball, and you scramble out of it, you have a distorted coverage in your secondary. It's key to really stay in your position for the defense when he starts scrambling or somebody be open for a touchdown. Here comes the dime backfield, defensive backfield for the UCLA Bruins. Get a number so far. Yes, yeah, six defensive backs. Four, ball. four rushes, one linebacker. Ball on the 39. It is third down and five. Tennessee continues to assault with formations. Well, it looked like they had in mind uh, trying to split them up the middle, and William Howard ran into Terry Toomey, and Toomey just was staying at home, and nobody moved him around, and he made the stop. That situation is when you outcoach yourself. Let the quarterback use the audible. And uh, he had a pass called. He saw a certain defense. He tried to change off to the run, and it didn't work. Garmin in the punt. First one today was good for 43. He's got a little help in the wind. Get some spin on it. And drifting back to Gifford Urban. And a penalty flag is down as Urban goes down at the 19. 41-yard punt, no return. Let's see about the flag. The referee is Dick Burleson. Keith, as they discuss, oh, go ahead with officials. Yeah, they can read them. You go ahead. Okay, well, Tennessee has always expelled in the kicking game, particularly Bob Nalen started that. He believed the games were one loss in the kicking game. Every Tennessee coach that's been here has stressed, emphasized an excellent kicking game. Clip through it. Goes back to the spot that hurts you the most. They penalize it from right there. So the Bruins are going to start deep in their own territory this time as we go to Jim again. And we give you the latest from Ann Arbor where Michigan has just scored on a three-yard Gerald White touchdown run, capping a drive, 80 yards, 12 plays. The Wolverines kept the ball for seven minutes in the drive. Now very late in the third quarter, moving to the fourth quarter with Michigan leading it 17-12. Back to Keith Jackson. Horses are in South Carolina. <laughs> Here's Johnny. It's Terry Donahue. What a fine football coach he is. Low key. There's his winning record, 70 percent. Last five years, something like 75 percent. Two big Rose Bowl wins. 
I remember him when he walked on at UCLA. Just a little old guard, wasn't he, Keith? No, he played defensive tackle on Defense? Tommy Prothrow's uh, did he? Uh, uh, team. Yeah. How much did he weigh? Well, he, he used to lie. <laughs> I think he weighed about 187 pounds, 88 pounds. I've known him a long time, and I like him. He's a fine man. He's a strong communicator. Motivates his team by as well as anybody we have at the game today. A little mad at those officials about something. Nine-yard line. First down, Brewer. Getting into it. Ball goes to Gaston Green. Good run by Green up to close to the 17-yard line. So that's about eight for him. Another good blocking by that UCLA line, particularly on that right side. They've done an excellent job. That's where they scored their touchdown. Jim McCullough, the leading uh, blocker for the team, number 77, and Russ Warwick, just a sophomore, but great potential. Bruins play selection so far in the game. 12 runs, nine passes. Double tight end, second down, two. That's impressive, Keith, the balance between running and passing. Tailback's got it. Green's got the first down. As he changes directions twice on that short run and moves the ball out to the 22. That fellow there on the right with a towel around him, that's Norm Anderson. He is the man who principally sends the plays in. Norm was a... A wide receiver at uh, UCLA in his playing days. Well, Keith, we've got some excellent wide receivers on both teams, not just the two All-American prospects in Sherrod and McGee. They are balanced across there with talent, skill people, both teams. First down and 10 from the 22. Whistle stops them. And the quarter is over. Well, the clock ran out apparently just as the ball was snapped, and so they stopped the play. And after 15 minutes in Knoxville, it's 10 nothing UCLA, and the Bruins are trying to take control of the ball game. We go to the second quarter at Dillon Stadium, Knoxville. 90,000 folks in attendance. We've got over 91,000 seats. It looks cool. And there are the stats for the first quarter. The Bruins slowly but surely taking control of this ball game. It is first down. At the 22, Stevens pitches to Green. Gaston Green is tripped up and goes out to about the 26. That'll be a four-yard pickup. Well, St uh, Keith, those stats just reflect good offensive performance and execution. Good running with the football, 104 yards, and uh, there's Gaston Green's record so far. But mixing up the passes, six out of nine for Stevens. That's impressive, the way he's kept the defense off balance in Tennessee. Second and six. to the 43-yard line before Terry McDaniel brings him down. McCullough, the right guard, and the son of Bobo make good blocks. Favre just has a gaping hole, has nowhere to go but right down the middle, north and south. Finally, the safety man brings him down. James Primus is now in, a sophomore out of National City, 195, 90 pounds, the tailback. Another very promising youngster. And uh, Stevens makes it to it. And he's sacked. And the ball rolls loose. And the Tennessee man covers it. But they call him down. Back at the 33 34. That time the Blitz got home. That's what the Tennessee needs to do is get some penetration on these play action passes. Quarterback has to hold the ball quite a while. And the receivers had not gotten open. You can. Uh, I believe it was That's a good, good call. call. Good yeah. call. Stevens' knee was down while he had possession of the ball. The play is over, even though he later fumbled. I think his whole body was down. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see. Go. Close. Close. The ball, yeah, was, no. the ball was kicked out as he was waving it. Tough call against Tennessee. Second down. down. They've got to go to the Tennessee 47, roughly, to get the first down. This snap is from about the 34. They run a draw. And carrying is Primus, and Primus is maybe 38-yard line. Another look at it. It looks to me like his leg's down. All right, the, it seems to me that the ball hopped, put, 
hop that. might have. Yeah, it, it seems like they knocked it out just before his knee touched the ground. Fisher was screened off from it. Fisher is over to the right. He cannot, uh, he cannot see it. it. Number 99, Anthony Howard, I believe, knocks the ball out with his right hand. It is third down, UCLA and 14. it go and it is incomplete the pass receiver Willie Anderson turned inside the ball was thrown outside that is fourth down and the Bruins now will punt Tennessee got some rush on the pass so that's the key to any pass defense success put some pressure make the quarterback throw earlier than he wants to before your defense is spread thin in the secondary McGee the deep man dangerous with Henderson the punt his first kick today was looking for 30 yards into the wind. Now he's got the wind in his back. Kind of swirls around in this big oval, and he gets a dandy. McGee gets a good drop and comes back to the 20. Otherwise, uh, Nick Tim is spread all over the landscape. That was a 44-yard punt and a four-yard return tackled by Marcus Turner. There's a star in your life. Tennessee Volunteers need to get some points on the board. They have the ball first down at their own 20, trailing 10 0 with 12 14 to go in the first half. Opening game for Tennessee, second game for UCLA. Charles Wilson and Keith Davis line up in the backfield. No real fullback in there right now, and Tony Robinson rolls it out with a guardian. Throws it to the sideline. The pass is caught by Charles Wilson, and Wilson is short of his first down, just over the 28. Again, Jim. 12. And here's the latest down in the loveliest village where Southern Mississippi has gotten a touchdown and a field goal in the third quarter, the touchdown on a 78-yard pass. And now Auburn struggling just a bit, the number two ranked team leading Southern Mississippi 19 to 12. Navy has fallen to Delaware, the first game between these two teams in 51 years, and the Blue Hens beat the midshipmen 16-13. Yours, Keith. Now Napoleon got Napoleon McCallum got over 100 in the first half. Robinson rolls out, runs away from the pursuit, gets his pass away, hits him on the numbers. Look out! This is Tim McGee, and he is finally run down on the UCLA 41. What a fantastic play! There's no reason away. A bust in the in the backfield first, and then you can see Robin Robinson has that great knack of finding open receiver when he's scrambling, and McGee is exciting. What a great receiver! McGee runs in motion, turns down, and as soon as he sees the scramble by Robinson, go to the open spot. Come on inside, find the opening right there. Now put on the dance, and there he goes. Two catches for McGee, 61 yards, first down Tennessee, through and 41. Howard, the lone back, and now they shuffle things around with Keith Davis going for the tailback slot, and Davis has it. Puts his helmet down and rams against Mark Whalen and gets something out of it. Davis at 190, running into a 250-pounder from Burlingame, California. Tony Robinson, over 100 yards in his passing. I don't know if I've seen a quarterback recently that has a... I mean, he threw, he was moving, and he, the pass was just letter perfect. And moving to his left, key, which you pointed out, and which is a difficult to throw, moving to your left and throw across your body right over the numbers. Second down and seven, and Robinson back to throw. Mass protection has a man. Throw to the first down. Good tackle by Rutledge. Craig Rutledge really laid a hit on Jeff Smith and kept him from picking up the first down. He'll be about a yard short of it. Rutledge, number 30, intercepted the first quarter pass. Brigham Young last week for a touchdown. He had knee sur arthroscopic knee surgery about two and a half weeks ago, too. Here's the numbers. Three and a half Jeff. weeks ago now. Here's that arthroscopic surgery is something else, Keith. This greatest invention of all fourth athletics is concerned. But Jeff Smith, the tight end, the key man. Third down and about a yard. Ran all over the field. Last time they went on a short yardage play, they gave it a fullback. This time, they didn't make it again. Charles Wilson, the tailback, took it that time, and they didn't make it as uh, Mark Whalen Defensive right side tackle just nailed him down. Well, Keith, when you spread everybody all over the field and the defense do not move out with you, 
You can't run the ball. The numbers game catches. They got more players on defense at the point of attack than you do offense. Johnny Majors wants a timeout to talk to his team about what to do. I guess he's got in mind that he's going to go for he's it. Gonna go he's going to go for it. He's going to be looking at fourth down at about two yards with 9.42 to go in the half and trailing 10-0. Tennessee is yet to convert on either third down or fourth down in five tries in the ball game. And they're going to go on fourth and two here. The ball at the UCLA 33. Keith, when you run on fourth and one like they did early and third and two and don't make it, then you usually line up and try some play action pass. They're in a power eye. I think they're going to run on play action pass. That play action pass. It was Jeff Smith that pulled it down. That's the key. You go with your best horses. Your best player is your quarterback. And a fake in the backfield is really the key that sets it up. 81 just goes to the ground just like he's a blocker. Smith of 81. Now he jumps up. The linebackers have forgotten him. Good play acting. That's the key. Got to fool those people sometimes <laughs> like that. I had one of those or two in my time. Jump doesn't think so, but I did. <laughs> First and ten from the UCLA 27. Davis is the tailback. Howard the fullback. Robinson swings it out to Davis. One hand catch. He got a block. That popped him loose there. Number 75 came across. John Bruin and laid the block for him. And he made something out of the play when it looked like he was going to take a lick for a loss. Well, this Tennessee offense is based a lot on Bill Walsh of San Francisco. Here's the Volunteers' possession. Two plays fumble, four plays putt, four plays lost on downs, five plays and a putt, and here we are on their fifth possession threatening. Robinson now 9 of 11, 125 yards. Stay with that quarterback. He looks sensational. Second down six from the 23. Wings it over there in a hurry and uh, gets short yardage out of it. Coming up quickly to make the tackle on Joey Clink scales is Darrell Henley and the pass is ruled incomplete. I guess he lost it going down. That's a situation where the blitz by UCLA was on and Robinson makes Keith a, a side adjustment. I'm not sure those are uh, the best thing to do. He just raised up and throws the ball regardless of what he had called in the hump. And it was very close to being intercepted by Henley number two. Defensive back. Third down at about six now for Tennessee. The blitz scared him out of running. The, the threat of the blitz scared you, uh, Tennessee out of their play. Wilson is back in. He goes in motion. Here's the blitz. Anybody? Number 40, Toomey, coming out of the nose guard position, makes the hit on him. And the loss is back beyond the 30 to about the 32. One thing you worry about in this part of the field, you expect the blitz, a twist. Toomey slides up on the left and comes all the way around the other man, number 95, Whalen, and makes the play. The twist is difficult to pick up with this uh, Tennessee offense, Keith, because they block right at the line of scrimmage. They don't retreat on their pass. Well, Carlos Rivez is in, and he gets a considerable challenge in his first try as a volunteer. It's a 49-yard try. In your first try. So the younger brother comes through from 49 yards. Tennessee's on the board at 10 3. Garibaldi and Green go deep for UCLA as Tennessee scores the 49 yard field goal off the foot of Rivez, and it's a 10 3 ball game, and Carlos will kick off now. Kick into the wind. Goal line. Green. Out to the 25. Brought down by Darren Miller. Now the old pendulum swings. It looked like UCLA was going to take control of the ball game for a time. The Tennessee defense took some chances, got their back up, made some big plays. And now the offense came in and produced some points. And the defense had some time to rest. It is quite cool today, however. And let's see what the strategy is at this point. Defense jumping around. Show a four-man front right now with four backers. They literally are lined up in a 4-4-3. Oldest 
defensive football, Steve. <laughs> and the ball is given off to the tailback, James Primus. And Primus powers over the left side and gets up to about the 27. Here's the offensive yards by UCLA, 122 and 60, just the reverse by Tennessee. Tennessee's primarily a passing team. Cannot uh, be a very effective running the ball if UCLA continues to blitz. Second down and eight. Stevens to throw. Goes back to the weak side man, and the ball is caught at the 31. The crowd hoops. They thought it bounced in there. Ruled good catch again, Jim. The latest now from Ann Arbor. After a brief Notre Dame goal line stand, Michigan settled for a field goal. Now five minutes, 12 seconds to go. The Wolverines leading by eight. At this point, of course, Notre Dame would have to score twice to do better than tie. Back to Keith and Frank. They called that an incomplete pass after all, didn't they? Yes, the umpire has that call. The man inside on any pass, whether it's strapped or not, and he ruled it incomplete. So it's third and eight. Here's the play. Gets it off and just before the blitz, but he is short of the first down. That's a good defensive play on Carl Durrell. There were two men coming. That's one of the things that we were told about the Tennessee defensive people. They may not have much experience yet, but they can run to the ball. That's a great point. The thing that you do in pass defense, give them the short pass, but don't let them make anything run it after the catch. It. And the Durrell caught that ball three yards from the first down. He can make another inch. Not another inch. Two Tennessee men hit him as he said. Tim McGee deep. Henderson the punt. High kick. McGee drifts under it. Fair catches it. Foul kick, Keith, because the, the, uh, the covering team cannot run within two yards of the safety man once the ball is on its downward flight. It's a five-yard penalty. Marcus Turner was a man who ran close to him. 41-yard punt. And looks like they'll mark off five yards against the Bruins. 6.01 to go, first half. The five-yard penalty puts the football out at the 33 for Tennessee. And so Tony Robinson and the company get pretty good field position for this possession. Robinson is out of Tallahassee. Tallahassee? What are you doing, Bobby? <laughs> well, he wanted to play on a team like Tennessee. This type of offense. Great, great, great history here. I said he wanted to go away from home. Robinson quickly delivers the ball. The ball is caught by Keith Scales, and Joey is up for about a five-yard pickup near the 38-yard line. Keith, both teams have seemed to be having some truck of some success with the blitz because I think both offensive lines are inexperienced. Tennessee's going to go without a hope. They, they plan to do this some in this ball game. Brad's got to cooperate with them a little local. Well, look, the value of this, the defense cannot call sometimes what they want to. Little sideline pass again. It's just close to the first down. Good to Eric Swanson. Where'd they put him out? At the 44. Well, I believe that'll be a first down. You don't huddle. Your defense cannot get called all the stunts, Steve, that they won't do the blitzes. They have to play pretty much a basic defense. Chains aren't set, though. They can't go to the chains are set. Now they can go. Same stuff. For the UCLA 49. Robinson is just reading the defensive coverage. UCLA is lining up in a basic defense with a no huddle. He got a bad spot there, Frank. He sure did. <laughs> got about a, lost about a yard. Yeah, he did. Here again, you'll see the audible at the line of scrimmage. Keep by Robinson calling play out right and left. That's a change defense. By UCLA. And he's taking them, taking them out of the blitz. Loops it this time. Swanson and a little bit too long. Swanson had wiggled around and gotten behind Chucky Miller. And 
Robinson's pass was just a little long for Swanson. Chucky Miller, Chucky Miller di disrupted the pattern of the wide receiver Swanson. Otherwise, I believe it had been completed. Miller saw he's going to get beat. He just used his hands legally and disrupted the pattern. The timing was off. That's a good way to play pass defense. You can't cover him, disrupt his pattern, Gene. He lost another half a yard on the spot this time. They've now got the ball all the way back. <laughs> 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 right, but it really ought to be up on the 49. They're 0 for 5 on third down conversion. Robinson takes off up the middle. He's got room. He's got a first down. He's out of bounds. Inside the 40 at the 39. He's six foot three, but at least it looks like five of those six three <laughs> legs. I mean, he is really a long-legged kid. Keith, he has that quickness, that vision, and he's a great competitor. The coach has told me that when he runs into adversity, it doesn't bother him at all. And as soon as he saw the hole opening up, he just ran for the first down. Quarterback like that, receivers all covered, he makes the first down. That's the reason he was so successful last year. First year as a starter. They hit him, gets the ball off, and it is incomplete and a great effort on the catch downfield. But Tim McGee couldn't pull it down between James Washington and Daryl Henley. Two pretty good defensive players there. Washington, the safety man, is going to come over. It looks like he's going to maybe knock the ball loose from McGee, but the play was just perfectly thrown. Robinson knew he was going to take a shot. He stayed in there and threw the ball just perfectly. Could have been completed. Just a great throw, great touch. Mm. Outstanding touch. Boy, he's exciting. Robinson is just to make the big play for you, Keith. Second and ten. Dump it off. Wilson's got two men in front of him. Got a first down inside the 20. Penalty flag. Got a face mask, I believe, down around the 15-yard line. What a beautiful call by the Tennessee State. First time they've shown the screen to the back. How do you fight the rush? What do you do when the defensive end are getting pressure? You set up the screen and look at the house. Beautifully it was concealed by the Tennessee team. And finally Washington, who made 119 tackles last year. Wings at that. that looks like that was piling on, Keith. Might have been. Didn't take one. Flag came out immediately, and you see there was an official right there, and it's going against the Bruins. That's the distance. Five yards, face mask, yeah, face mask. That's defense, what it first down. Inadvertent face mask on the tackle. And now Tennessee has the ball. It is just outside the 10. It is not really first and goal. About two inches. Yeah. They could make a first down on the one inch line and have four more down. This is a tough place to score from a team like Tennessee. The defensive field has struck. Very little yardage to cover. Davis and Henderson in the backfield. Robinson checking around here and changing things. And there's a flag there. Somebody moved. There was collision in the trenches. I don't know whether it was Waller, the middle guard. He got an early start, and whether he was started by movement on the Tennessee line. And I'll let the men in the striped shirts who get paid for it make that decision. Keith, it looked to me like that the quarter, the center snapped the ball once Waller jumped the neutral zone. That's a smart play by the center, Tennessee hyper... What it appeared to be. Well, that was a big play and a bad point in the state. Uh, UCLA to make it this time. Yeah, that was uh, Todd Kirk in Set there. Ball foul. Offside. Defense. First down. Some schools teach their son up. Once the defense jumped into the neutral zone, if you snap the ball, you get a five-yard penalty. Different critter right now, though. Instead of first and ten plus two inches, it's first and five plus two inches. Changing the play again. Changing the play. Pass intended for McGee. McGee turned to the outside. The ball went over the other shoulder. It's incomplete. The, this type of offense 
keep when you split that wide and the defense do not move many people out. You've got to throw the ball. That's what's wrong with this offense inside the 10. You really don't have any assault on type of, of uh, running game. When you have first and five, you ought to be able to stick it in the end zone with, what, a yard and three quarters per try. Tennessee's got 12 men out there. One's got to come off. Good count. <laughs> Charles Wilson, uh, Keith Davis went in, Wilson didn't come out. Now Charles runs off just in time. And it's second down and goal from the five. Roll the quarterback down. Big fullback hits inside the five, close to the four, and a penalty flag. Looks like that uh, when Robinson, when Robinson went to I think Wallen, that count. Yep, I think Wallen jumped. Yep. Waller jumped. When, when you change the snap count on the goal line, the defense are all fired up and ready to shoot that gap, get some penetration. You go to a long count, watch the bottom of your screen. While the nose guard just jumps right there very clearly, and then this ball is snapped by the center, catching him off sides. That's Johnny Majors. Keith Johnny Majors had, was the most decorated college player to ever become a successful head coach. Run up in the Heisman Trophy in 1956 to Paul Horning. A very Dead persistent... Ball foul. Offside. Defense. When Johnny, worked, down. when Johnny worked for me, Keith, he was a perfectionist in everything that he did. Still is. UCLA's been flagged five times for 28 yards. And now Tennessee's looking at second down and goal. The ball at the Bruin. Three. And then their goal line offense. And all the blockers are in tight. Oh, look at this. Davis has hit behind the line of scrimmage. A great effort. I, I thought it was Jarecki, 99. It came flying in it there was, to get a piece Keith. of it. It was. Jarecki, Jarecki came clean inside the end and made the play and threw Tennessee back. Lost the yard. So it's third and goal from the four. If you're going to throw the ball in this area, you have to, most of the time, cross your receivers or roll your quarterback out. Some this type of running attack ball. right here looks pretty pathetic. There's no socket, is it? No, not when you throw the ball. Is it? Robinson gets away. Now he's got a man wide open. Touchdown! Tim Hendricks, and here's 90,000 happy folks. his name in the book he makes that first catch pay off doesn't he junior from DeSoto Texas the extra point try is good well we're back where we started absolutely Keith Robinson's athletic ability is what made this play up at the top of your screen the quarterback number three Washington looked like he had it for a loss but Robinson's quickness gets him outside gives him plenty of time from the end zone you're what Washington number three is a great athlete right there diving for him but he couldn't pull Robinson down now he has plenty of time Smith number 98 had no chance and Hendricks makes his first reception for a touchdown the tight end fakes the block watch him go down on his knees like he's going to block. This is legal for him to block right there. Then he comes up. Linebackers have played the run all the way. Wide open for the touchdown. Hendrick. Rutledge number 30 had no chance. So it's a 10-10 tie with three minutes and 35 seconds to play in the first half. Garibaldi and Green deep and Revez to kick off. Across the 20 to about the 22, there UCLA will start. That's the halftime program for you. One of the great bands in America, Dr. Julian's Pride to the Southland Band, University of Tennessee. Keep 90 some odd thousand people here every week. You know, it's the thing to do in North 
Tennessee. He's come to see the Volunteers play, and that fan has a lot to do with it. Yes, they do. First down, Bruin from the 22. Far and green in the backfield behind Matt Stevens. Matt rolls it out, loops his pass to the sideline. Good to Durrell. Durrell is brought down at about the 31, close to a first down, maybe a yard short. Here's Robinson talking to his coaching upstairs. Walt Harris is the offensive coordinator, coach in Illinois, on the Mike White. What a career this young man has had. Started just last year for the first time as a junior. Second and one for the Bruins. Tennessee's not in the goal line short yardage defense. that got burned earlier. They pop it up the middle and get their first down. Out to about the 34 with Mel Farr carrying the ball. UCLA continues to mix up and be unpredictable on first down between a run and a pass, and that just diminishes your ability to defend against them. Tennessee defense cannot call their defenses with any degree of success. They don't know what to do. They go double wide now, sending Darrell and Sherrard to the top of the picture. Both teams, two timeouts, two and a half minutes to go first half. 10-10 tie. Stevens, roll out, has a protector, gets his pass off, has a man, and the catch is made. They're going to rule that a good one. It was uh, Sherrard sliding down and catching the low ball. Sherrard number 82 is just going out and hooking up on the boundary where the Tennessee defenders. Well, it's hard to cover everything, so you spot the team a short pass in the boundary, hoping that it's incomplete or you make the tackle for the short game. Ball comes to the 39, second down to four. Paco Craig and Willie Anderson are the wide receivers now. And give it a guess from Green, Green to the 40. Good defense by the Tennessee team. If they are so inexperienced, they are gaining with every play, I suspect. Green now with that big 72-yard run has 100 yards on 10 carries and a touchdown. Pick it up on what you said about the Tennessee defense. Ken Donahue is a great coach, believes in fundamentals and intensity. Chase that football. Success he had in Alabama was phenomenal. Terrell and the Stewart come back now with the white people, and Stevens will throw. Going deep with it for Stewart. The 30 by Chris White. Blue Tennessee is a catch-up football team. They scored a lot of touchdowns in less than two minutes on the clock last year. Robinson can put them in there to get the good hot hand. Here, Sherrod is just out jump for the football. Chris White. Chris White came across the scene. I think that's wonderful. Chris White had not played anything but special teams before this year. Moved in the starting, starting in the lineup for the first time because Davis, the regular free safety, was injured. Made two or three great plays. And a senior key, that's what's great for youngsters to stay out this long, get the chance to play, and finally it comes. Better take some more grease. Okay. Timeout called. Minute and 37 seconds to go in the first half. A 10-10 tie. Tennessee's ball. The Tennessee Volunteers have the ball first down at their own 29. They've got one timeout remaining. A minute and 37 seconds to play. Robinson back to throw. Tim McGee, how does he do it? He and Sherrard are incredible. They're always open. Robinson had to throw the ball before the final cut was made by McGee. He's trailing the wide receiver, and he breaks down. The ball's already on its way. Gives McGee a chance to catch it and get out of bounds. No way to cover that. Perfect execution. And it's a first down at midfield for the Volunteers. A minute 31 to go in the first half. going for the bundle incomplete just barely the receiver blink scales got a hand on it but he couldn't catch it and let's see about the flag but Keith, while we're talking about the flag no i mean uh, mcgee was wide open again on the same play he could have called another 15 yarder encroachment i believe on the bruin change of the snap count the rusher jumped the, the neutral zone 
Might have been, might have been Batchkoff, the left tackle. There's your final score. Michigan defeats Notre Dame 20 to 12. Live ball foul. Offside. So, defense. First down. Yeah, UCLA was offside. So we will be next week at 3 Eastern time in Columbia, South Carolina with the Gamecocks and the Wolverines. That will be our game next week. Might be a pretty good run. Oh, yes. Joe Morrison has done a magnificent job at South Carolina. Bo Schimbeckler knows how to coach. First down and five, and Robinson taking his time. Got him in! McGee again! He's got a first down. He's out of bounds with the UCLA 22. Keith, I, I don't want to get complicated, but the flood on the boundary is really hurting. Three receivers, one deep, and McGee breaking in behind the deep receiver. Well, we have see that uh, McGee is going to trail the wide receiver, number 23, Swanson. Now you see how wide open he is. The linebacker doesn't dare drop that deep. Four receptions, 105 yards. Right into the boundary. Seldom do you see that. They're moving in a hurry. You've got a minute 19 to go. We have started this possession with 137 to play in the first half. <laughs> That's moving the ball, Keith. He's out here on the bottom of the picture. Robinson has some time. Goes for McGee again. Incomplete too high. He was in front of Chucky Miller that time. As much time as Tony had, it looked like he wanted to say to, to McGee, go back inside. There's nobody there. <laughs> and there wasn't. There wasn't the a white shirt anywhere. Well, we got a minute 13 left, Keith, and they brought the ball from about the 30-yard line to 29. 20, 29 to the 22. And it's second down and 10. In less than 30 seconds. Oh, they can move it down. 24 seconds they move at that ball. Catch the ball, step out of bounds. Robinson dropping back and banging right up the middle to get him was Terry Toomey, the middle guard. So that's the third tackle that Toomey has made in this first half. One thing that Robinson doesn't want to do, they're going to take their, no, they're going to take their time out. No, yeah, they, yeah that's, I guess that's a mistake so. too. They got one, uh, that's zero timeouts yeah. remaining. Now here's a look at UCLA and Westwood. The spirit and strength of UCLA is in its students. UCLA's student population is the largest of any campus in the University of California, but it's quality that sets these students apart. UCLA attracts top scholars from 50 states and 112 countries. They stimulate a rich cultural and intellectual climate and are proud to be part of one of America's leading universities. UCLA, an investment in the future. Here in Tennessee, there has been a dramatic mood change in Neyland Stadium. The crowd, after UCLA toured first in this ballgame, became deathly silent. It was not a factor. Even the players, the Tennessee players, could feel it, and they felt lucky to be in the ballgame, just down 10 points. But now they've come back. The momentum has changed. The scores have even changed the personalities of the players now. They believe they can win, and the crowd is a factor. And Keith, as you know, going into halftime, that Mr. Momentum is a big, big factor here in Neyland Stadium. <laughs> he's going to run it up the middle Wilson and he's short of the first down but he has the football square in front of the goal post at the 16 yard line and in comes Carlos Rivera and they've got to get the playoff without a timeout they got time the it's 30 yeah. seconds well they don't have quite that much on the 25 seconds clock but 49 yarder for Rivera earlier this is a 33-yarder. And it's good. So the Tennessee Volunteers with 16 seconds to go in the first half move out to a 13-10 lead over the UCLA Bruins. The Bruins jumped out 7-0 on a 72-yard run by Gaston Green. John Lee, a 39-yard field goal. It was 10-0 UCLA after a quarter. Revez hit a 49-yarder to make it 10-3. Hendricks ran it in. So caught a pass, rather, from Robinson to make it 10-10. And now Revez has kicked a 33-yard field goal. And Tennessee is on top by three. 
Well, this is the eighth time these teams have played. They've had seven games, excepting for one when UCLA shut them out 13 nothing. They have all been like this, up and down the field. But Tommy Prothero got some ad the first time they played in Memphis. He said he was never going to come back to his native state. And Bob Woodruff and uh, J.D. Morgan knew what they were doing when they scheduled this one. It's been a great series. They're three, three, and one in the seven games played. That was a tremendous drive. Poise and Robinson had done this three or four times last year. Pulled them out from behind the fourth quarter in a similar fashion. Just has that knack of scrambling and that throwing. He's got a rifle arm and he's very active. The kickoff on the ground, bouncing around, trying to force it up, man to take it, and they do. Number 15, Danny Thompson, the fullback, picks it up. Runs the ball up to about the 31 yard line. Now, let's have a look at UT Knoxville. Chosen field. Bruins come up. They're on 31 yard line. First down. Matt Stevens gives the ball off to the up and hand. Mel Farr. And Mel Ramble carries the ball across midfield and a Bruin first down with four seconds remaining. Once the chains are placed, the clock will start. I think probably they were, uh, did they spend the time out now? Maybe they want to take a time out, see what they can cook up. They have, they have one remaining, and since we were short-circuited out of the campus in Tennessee, let's go back to it. University of Tennessee is kind of like an airport. Every time I come here, they're building something. <laughs> they're adding, what, a 25,000-seat basketball arena well, over here. They want to build one. Keith, they want to build one bigger than Kentucky. <laughs> yes, so they about a thousand to 1,500 more seats in their basketball arena than Kentucky has in Rupp Arena in Lexington. The Bob Woodruff, the retiring athletic director, we go way back, Keith. He started me, gave me my first job in coaching, and he's done a magnificent job here in building the Tennessee program in all sports and the facilities. Midfield, first down, UCLA. Four seconds to go, first half. Stevens loads it up and lets it fly. It's intercepted. And brought back to the 25. That's Chris White's second interception of the first half. And at halftime, it's 13-10 Tennessee. Here's Tim Brandt with Coach John Major. All right, Johnny, coming into the game, I know one of your major concerns was your young defense, and yet they have swum to the football and done one way out of the job. Were you sandbagging us? The first time, no, not at all. We're, they're very new and very inexperienced. I still don't know, but I sure like the way they're fighting and hosting the football. That one big long run is the one big thing that's happened against them. Otherwise, I've been very proud of the way they've given an effort. Tony Robinson came up with a lot of big plays. In my mind, the big play goes to you. Fourth and one, and you call a rollout. Big, big play, big gamble. If it works, it's good. If it doesn't, it doesn't. A lot of plays can work on fourth and one, and some of them don't. According to how it turns out. Your young kicker, Rubens, came in and was super two. Yes, he is. He's very, I'm very proud of him. He told me before, the pregame warm-ups, he was kicking 57 to 60 yards, and I didn't want to give him a, a long shot the first time in. We, we went for fourth and one down here and didn't make it. All right, good luck the second half, Johnny. Thank you. We'll need it. All right, so Tennessee leads at 13 to 10. We'll be back here to Neyland Stadium after this commercial message and a word from your local station. CFA College Football. UCLA versus Tennessee is being brought to you by Radio Shack, the computer experts, and by Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. We'll return with more halftime activities after this message and a word from our local station. The Prudential Halftime Report is being sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock. It's strong. It's on the move. It's bigger than life. Hello again. I'm Jim Lampley. This is another day of upsets in college football. Watch for them carefully. We are going to go fast. Down at Auburn. Auburn has broken it up against Southern Mississippi less than two minutes to go. 29-12. Bo Jackson in the game. 30 carries. 205 yards and two touchdowns at Michigan. Michigan beat Notre Dame 20 to 12. The last Notre Dame threat was snuffed out on an interception by Doug Mallory, son of Indiana coach Bill Mallory, Bino Cook. Another rough opener for Jerry Faust. Seems every year we're talking about Jerry Faust, Jim. It's obvious that he has to win this year to keep his job. 
and he has to go to a major ball. Even the people close to Notre Dame say that. Notre Dame would not switch any games this year because they did not want to tamper with the schedule. In other words, play an early one Labor Day night, unless it had been Army. So they're doing everything for him. He got five years. A lot of schools will not do that. A lot of schools will not have the patience Notre Dame did. But Faust definitely has to go to a major bowl where he won't be back next year. And they start now at 0-1 with the loss to Michigan. Drake falling to Iowa 58 to nothing. Chuck Long 21 of 31, 248, two TDs. Penn State beat Temple 27 to 25. Temple's Paul Palmer, whom I called John Palmer earlier, 206 yards on the ground in 30 carries. LSU got strong games from all three offensive threats, Wickersham, uh, Hilliard, and James with good games. North Carolina threw it 53 times in the game, but lost 23-13. Delaware beating Navy. Navy now falls to 0-2. McCallum, 27 carries, 153 yards. Maryland beat Boston College 31-13. The Terps now 1-1. One one. Rutgers has been leading Florida throughout the first half now. Rutgers on top, 14-6, late in the second quarter. Baylor fell to Georgia. The Dogs bouncing back from the opening loss to Alabama, 17-14. Bowling Green upset Kentucky on a last-minute touchdown pass from Brian McClure and a safety on the ensuing kickoff. Miami with Testaverde having a big game. Beat Rice 48-20. Rice's 10th straight loss. Arizona State fell to Michigan State. Furless winning in the opener, 12-3. Lorenzo White, 39 carries, 174 yards and a touchdown. First game lost for John Cooper at Arizona State. Indiana trying to snap a 16-game losing streak, leading Louisville now 41-28 in the fourth quarter. If Indiana wins, then the longest losing streak in the country will belong to Rice, and New Mexico could make 10 in a row if they lose to New Mexico State tonight. Northwestern is leading Missouri. It is 20 to 17. Woody Widenhofer's first came as Missouri coach, and of course that would be a big upset. Kansas got a record-breaking performance from David or Mike Norseth at quarterback. He threw for 480 yards. They beat Vanderbilt 42 to 16. Some of you saw much of BYU Washington. Brigham Young leading 17 to 3. Doug Flutie, Robbie Bosco still having some trouble with interceptions. Yeah, he threw one more today, which puts his total to seven for this season. And he had 11 the entire year last year, and it's still a young season. He uh, has thrown a career 18 interceptions, five. In his last five games, he's thrown 14 of them against some of the bigger schools that have been able to get a good pass rush in his face. I think that's the key to stopping Robbie Bosco is getting the pass rush in his face. As UCLA showed last week, his interceptions were really the difference in that football game. So it's BYU leading Washington 17-3. We'll be back with more halftime right after this. The first quarter belonged to the UCLA Bruins, 10-0. The second quarter to the Tennessee Volunteers, 13-0. And at halftime, it's 13-10. And, Frank, the second quarter turnaround was really dramatic. But let's start with the long run by Gaston Green as he goes 72 yards off this play for the touchdown. The, it's the pitch sweep where Gaston Green is going to start to the outside and look for some daylight. And the daylight was provided by the block of the tight end and also by the block of the fullback. Goal line defense by Tennessee. Short yardage, the pitch, start wide, cuts back in a big hole. Excellent blocking. The speed of Green is outstanding, and he's off to the races without a Tennessee man chasing him. But Tennessee came back, first with a 49-yard field goal by Rivez, and then Tony Robinson showing his mettle and abilities of all kinds, hooks up on this rollout and hits Hendricks for the TD. The tight end faking a block at the line of scrimmage as the ball is being faked to the halfback in the, in the backfield. Then he breaks in behind the secondary, wide open. Great effort by Robinson for the touchdown throw. But the turnaround now, uh, what is UCLA had something like five penalties, a couple of turnovers, uh, and a quarterback sack and total on to 64 yards in the second quarter. Now let's join the pride of the Southland Band, the University of Tennessee, directed by Dr. W.J. Julia. Thank <laughs> you. 
before a crowd of 94,370. 1310 Tennessee. We'll be back with more after this information from our local station. Following two games in the Midwest, Indiana has snapped its 16-game losing streak, beating Louisville 41-28 at home. Both goalposts are down in Bloomington as Mallory finally gets a win there. Missouri is trailing Northwestern 27-17, relatively late in the fourth quarter. That would be a shocking loss for Woody Woodenhofer and the Tigers in his first game there as head coach. It would be a very big win for Dennis Green and Northwestern. We'll be back with more scores right after these messages. More scores now, which we haven't previously given you here. West Virginia beating Duke today. Surprisingly tough game, 20-18. Clemson beating Virginia Tech on a field goal after time had expired. Georgia Tech beating NC State. John Dewberry with three touchdown passes. Army beating Western Michigan. And Rutgers, Florida, which is now correct in our computer. We had told you Rutgers was leading. It is not correct. It is now Florida, 21-7 at halftime. Army beating Westing Michigan 48-6 today. Wisconsin beat Northern Illinois, that one 38-17. Oregon and Colorado, this is Ed Reinhardt Day at Boulder. It is 14-10 Colorado in that game in the third quarter. And Air Force and Wyoming, Air Force under Fisher DeBerry leading Wyoming 14-7 at halftime. We'll be returning you to the football game in your area right after this. The Prudential Halftime Report was sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. College football, UCLA versus Tennessee. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, who invite you to see today Chevy, drive today Chevy, live today Chevy. And by exceptionally smooth Michelob, the beer of choice for people who are moving up. Where you're going, it's Michelob. We'll return for the second half kickoff after these messages. With head coach Terry Donahue of UCLA. And Terry, the first thing I'm going to ask you is about the quarterback situation. I know you said you were going to have Nori ready. Uh, will Matt start again the second half? Yeah, Matt's going to start the second half, and we'll see how it goes. And I thought he played real well in the first quarter. And then the second quarter, our team didn't play as well on either side of the football. And we're going to have to see what happens here. Uh, Tennessee's a good team, and we're a three-point underdog, and we're behind by three points. So we'll see what happens. Defense made some mental errors, jumped off sides a little bit. I want to ask you about the Tennessee no-huddle offense. Did that cut down your blitz, and did it throw you out of, out of sync? No, we prepare for no huddle every week. Everybody runs no huddle offense in our league, so we prepare for it every week. Quite honestly, uh, uh, we're just we're just getting into the game, and we got to see how we do this half. Uh, we made some mistakes. We had a lot of penalties the first half. I didn't think uh, the first quarter, I thought we played real well. Second quarter, I didn't think we played as well. And hopefully we'll get back into it and get going. All right, Terry, good luck the second half. Quite frankly, Keith, a little, they looked a little bit flat in the second quarter, and it seemed to die here on the sidelines. I think he emphasized that in the locker room, and the players now are showing a little bit more emotion down here on the UCLA side. It was kind of interesting, Tim, that he brought his football team in here Thursday, and they had a very long workout out, at, out here yesterday. A lot of work on the kicking game in particular and kick coverage. And he was concerned about the crowd, and as you noted earlier, he had worked, uh, they worked some on that uh, no-sound uh, offensive alignment. But you're right, they did flatten out in the second quarter. Tennessee uh, got ahead of steam. We'll see what happens. The Volunteers will get the ball first here in the second half. The kick goes to Peluska, two yards deep in the end zone, and Pete's coming out with it. And he comes out to about the 18-yard line, maybe the 19, before they're breaking down. 
UCLA's defensive front is Batchkoff. Tackle Frank is 245. Toomey, the middle guard, had a big first half, 230-pound sophomore. Mark Whalen is 6'5 and 250, a fifth-year senior. Melvin Jackson, the linebacker, 6'3, 225. Uh, Eric Smith, 6'3, 220. Steve Jarecki, 6'2, 215. And Tommy Taylor, the young man from Chattanooga, 6'1 and 235. Here's the first snap of the second half from the 19-yard line. Goes to the fullback, Henderson. One yard, that's all. The offensive alignment for Tennessee is the same that started the ball game. Chucky Miller is a cornerback, left cornerback for UCLA, and Daryl Henley is the other corner. They're both right at 5'9". Strong safety is Craig Rutledge, 6 feet, 185, and James Washington, the free safety, 6'1 and 195. Second down and nine, Tennessee from the 20. And Robinson comes out throwing, having trouble finding somebody right now, and then breaks it out of there. And he's got his first down as he slides on up to about the 32-33. So Robinson again gets him off the hook. There's your offensive alignment that started the ball game, and that's the same group in there right now. If your defense just does all they can do, they cover, they get a good rush, but the ability of Robinson breaks up the middle and makes the first down run. Demoralizing to your defense. Picked up 12 yards on the carry. 13 to 10, Tennessee leads as we start the second half of play. Keith Jackson, Frank Royals, and Tim Brandt with you. And here's a long looping pass downfield. That is up by number 87, Click Scales, and he's Did it look like you he pushed off a little bit? Certainly did. He put James Washington in the deep seats and got away with it. The pitcher was right there. And what it looked from this Spanish ball. He was anyway. trying to get back to the ball, and Washington was sort of blocking his way, and perhaps that entered into the judgment. But whatever, you'll see it on the replay. 68-yard touchdown, and Tennessee out. About to make it 20 to 10 if they can kick the extra point. The old momentum has turned, as we can see by the fans, the, the gate of the Tennessee team coming out of the huddle. Everything about them is picked up. Randy Sanders puts down the snap, and Rivers kicks it through and makes it 20 to 10. A shocker to start the third quarter. It was Gaston Green, 72-yard sprint for a touchdown. There was a shocker in the first quarter. Now let's have another look and uh, watch watch the power of Robinson's arm here. And right. He, plus, he has to scramble, but he realizes he's got a man pretty much open. There you can see Clay Scale <laughs> just pushed Washington completely uh, <laughs> all the way <laughs> off, just as we saw earlier. And then Clay Scale, with his breakaway speed, goes in. Joey Clinkscale. It's kind of like seven. society. It's the call from the young <laughs> Well, the ball is underthrown. Sometimes the receiver has the best chance on an underthrown takeoff pattern. But right here, Clinkscale takes his right arm, and then his left arm, and kind of pushes him a little bit. And then the turf shoes catch uh, the turf really more than the push, I believe. Uh, through Washington to the ground, and Clinkscale takes it in. And Tennessee has scored now on four straight possessions. Keith, once again, the scrambling ability of Washington uh, Robinson made the difference. He had a rush on him. Kickoff by Rivez goes to Bob Garibaldi. And he hammers his way, and that's a fair word, out just across the 25. The Tennessee defensive unit beginning to assert itself. Robbie Scott, 275 at tackle. Red Bennett, 260 at middle guard. Mark Rovanek, 245 at tackle. Linebackers, Tyrone Robinson, 6'2", 215. Dale Jones, 6'2", 220. Kelly Ziegler, 6 feet, 220. And Darren Miller, 235. And the sophomore. So it's sophomore, sophomore, junior, junior amongst the linebackers. And junior side, two sophomores in the down position. UCLA from just over the 25. Take it into the middle with Mel Farr carrying, and he picks up about three yards. Gary McDaniel, 5'10", 165 at one corner. The other is Victor Peppers, 5'8", 155. He, too, is a sophomore. 
Tommy Sims, the strong safety, the only experience really back there in the secondary, and Chris White, who had two interceptions in the first half. Second down, call it seven. Stevens gives the ball to Gaston Green, and Green with a good strong run slipping off the corner. Takes the football out near the 40-yard line, and it looks like it's pretty much the same unit that started the ball game for UCLA. You've got Earl Smith coming into the ball game at a tight end spot now. Replacing Tunnell. No, Tunnell stays in. They go double tight. On first down, Matt Stevens is checking off. And goes back to Gaston Green, who slashes over the right side, gets another first down, and almost breaks out of there and goes home. Tommy Sims hadn't grabbed him by the shirt. I believe he might have run all the way. Here's a halftime stat. You can see that Tennessee has gained and taken over the edge in first downs and uh, in total yardage. Turnovers is the big key. Last two passes that Stevens has thrown intercepted. They had three to Tennessee's one. Yeah, but one of them was sort of that Hail yeah. Mary into the end. end That's right. right. Penalties have meant something those people. Yes, they have. Have kept the Tennessee drive going. Marcus Greenwood is the fullback now, has the ball. Marcus, 5'11", 210, a junior out of Bakersfield. And on the first down carry, gets about three, close to four yards out of it. UCLA's averaging close to seven and a half yards each rushing play. This Tennessee, on the other hand, about two and a half, but Tennessee has been whooping them with the pass and uh, the scrambling ability of Tony Robinson. This Tennessee defense has played much better than I'm sure that they had anticipated with as much inexperience as they have, but they're tackling good, Keith. And it's green again. Now the UCLA ground game asserting itself as Gaston Green goes for another Bruin first down, getting about seven yards on that carry. Tennessee out to a 20 to 10 lead off that 68 yard pass play from Robinson. Clink scales. Clink scales. Who caught it? Believe it or not, it's cool enough in the third quarter to put your coat on. That's football. They're all chewing them up with that ground game. Offensive line, UCLA is doing a great job blocking. Inside play again, Greenwood almost pops out of there. Number 54, Dale Jones, got a piece of him and knocked him off balance, but still the big guy picks up. Oh, you see, he goes all the way down to the 25, so he's got eight yards. It's just an assault type of offense, running straight at him, pitching off and cutting back from the tailback. Offensive line deserving the credit, controlling that neutral zone. Second down, two. gets the first down. So they are really just blowing them out of there. I think the attendance reflected there is a direct tribute to Bob Wood because he's the man that started building here the quality of the programs and of course Bob Neyland and many many others contributed to the legend of Tennessee football. But they fill it up mostly every week. back in at fullback. Green again. Outside he goes. Boy, they're getting seven yards off that first down carry every time, Frank. Dale Jones, number 54. Outside linebackers going to just chase. Good defensive players. When they see a chance, the ball carry going the other way. Don't let up. You never know when you're going to figure in the play. Take a good chase angle, and he does. 105 tackles last year. Bill got seven yards out of it. He's got 148 yards, Green does, on 15 carries. Green again. And close to the first down. He's going to be down around the eight-yard line, and that should be a first down. First and goal for UCLA. Well, that UCLA offensive line of Hartmeyer at left guard, Cox at left tackle, Goble at center, McCullough at right guard, Warnick at right tackle, all a 6'5 or better, 250 to 60 pounds, are doing a great job of controlling the line. 
First and goal from the eight. UCLA's ball. Somebody moved, Keith, and when they blow it that early, it, most of the time it's the offense unless the defense made contact. Against the Bruins. Yeah, they offensive lineman run it on a quick count. One thing that Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, does with his offense, they either run on a quick count or a delayed count. They alternate to try to confuse the defense. The right of the screen, you see the, you see the left tackle, Cox, number 72, jumping off, head of the count. Couldn't wait. Anxious to get after the Tennessee defense. So the ball comes back to about the 13, where it's first down and goal from there. Reston Green. Green's trying to cut back, can't do it. There's a good defensive play. Who was that? Number 14, it was. Terry Brown, cornerback on that side, wouldn't let him outside, came back and whacked him down. Keith, you mentioned the cornerback, number 14, supporting on the sweep is the key to stopping that play. The cornerback has got to come up like a linebacker and turn it inside, and he, played, he did perfectly. Green has been the motor in this drive. Second down and goal, not a pass. From the 11, and they give it to Green again, and he dies back to about the original line of scrimmage where it'll be third down and goal. So Gaston Green in this drive has carried two, four, six, eight, eight times for 58 yards. See, the coaches will tell you that when your team starts to drive and gets tapping the ball over 10 times, it sure increases the possibility of a mistake by the offense. That's what happened. UCLA got offside, a five-yard penalty. That's put him in the hole. As Stevens, 9 for 16, two interceptions. He's got the throw here. Third and goal from the Tennessee 8. Gets it away, and it's intercepted. Intercepted at the three-yard line by Victor Tucker. The rush on Stevens made him throw the ball poorly. Cornell is out in the open, but the ball is underthrown. Interception stops the drive. Score 20 to 10, Tennessee. 20 to 10, Tennessee. As they take over, the ball is at the three. Stevens' last three passes intercepted. One of them was just up for grab. That one was just didn't have anything on it. Pepper grabbed it. Now Tennessee has got to protect the ball. Let's see if they let Robinson have his way down here, if they run everything out of there as they go to the big fullback, Henderson. And Sam booms his way out to about the six-yard line. And that's Bo Jackson's totals for the day. Impressive, and uh, Auburn had a uh, game on their hands today, winning by 11. LSU had to come late to get that one. Big day for Rickersham and Hilliard. State be Temple by two. It is second down and seven now with Jim Miller in at the fullback spot. And Robinson looks up to throw it. Nobody to throw it to. And Tony eats it back on the five. Boy, that Chucky Miller, number 37, had done a great <laughs> job on Swanson, the wide receiver. He couldn't get away yeah. from him. Nope. Couldn't get away from him. Disrupt that pattern. The quarterback raises up throw quick. Don't back up if you're a defensive back. You know he's got to throw it quick. Now William Howard comes into the ball game, replacing Miller at fullback. BYU beating up on the Huskies. And Oregon, Oregon might be the spoiler in the back end. Third down and about eight. Pop it out of there with Charles Wilson. Wilson comes out to the 14, and he may have a first down. Boy, he had a hole behind that right guard, blew him, and Hibbert, the center, and he's got a first down. When the defensive people get busy trying to rush the passer and contain someone like Robinson, they're subject to being blocked. And they got cross-blocked on that last play, and as Chief said, a big hole. And now at the 14. Yeah. 
Jackson wants to throw. Gun. Pass is thrown to the outside screen for Clink Scales. And Clink Scales will move the ball out for another first down to about the 26 yard line. When you got an arm like Robinson and you got receivers that can run and it have to catch the ball, throw the ball close to the line of scrimmage. Give them a chance to pick up those blockers. Good safe pattern. You see the two or three blockers out in front of him. He Clink Scale comes close to Duke and uh, one of the, I guess that was Miller, 37. Going all the way. Those are good calls, Keith. Right on the last one. Those short passes keeping the ball. Robinson now 18 out of 25. 302 yards, two touchdowns. Come on, Jesus! Get the winner! Blitz. And it's Wilson tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Number 95, Mark Whalen, got a piece of him as he went by. And he goes down for a loss of a yard. Oh, well, Alma Mater came through with a big win. Georgia Tech. Georgia. And Kansas record performance at North South is a throwing machine out there. Kansas, Kansas is a dark horse. Come on, Kansas! Had a bunch of players. What did they lose? Seven players? Seven by, by academic eligibility, but uh, they're going ahead uh, full speed. Second down, 11. Robinson down the middle. Open for the first down at the 41 yard line. Yeah, Eric Swanson. Robinson really took the shot. He stayed in there knowing that he's going to take that shot and he throws that ball. He waits to the very last minute. He gets hit hard. But the ball is right on target. Swanson, junior college transfer from California. Came in last year. Had a good season as a pass receiver. Look how he jumps and cradles that ball. Let's see if he protects it. Goes down for reception. 41 yard line, first down. <laughs> pitch out. Charles Wilson up to the 44, picked up three. I'll tell you what, Frank. It might be gut check time for UCLA because if Tennessee does take that thing 97, 97 yards. Woo. But UCLA doesn't have, they have a catch-up offense, but nothing like uh, what uh, Tennessee has with Robinson. It would be hard for them to score two touchdowns on them and not have Tennessee score anymore. And Tennessee can put another one on the board. Take three scores with them. Second down, seven. Inside, Henderson carries. They have got to run a little bit, Keith. Now, to me, uh, number 40, uh, middle guard, <laughs> stepped in his path and uh, he took the ball of his momentum. In come the dime defense of UCLA. Situation substituting. Very popular in college today. They try to do a better job of defending against the pass. With six defensive backs in the lineup. It's third down and five for the ball. Freshman from Nashville booms for the first down to the UCLA 43. Once again, the defense wide now to get a good pass for us. That's the first thing on their mind. What are we going to do about Robinson? What are we going to do about Robinson? You better watch out for the run occasionally because the scouts up in the box have picked up what UCLA are doing on third down and have called twice a run off tackle and made the yardage. So he went from his own 46 down to the UCLA 43. That is the longest Tennessee run of the ball game. And the balls have it first down. Robinson on first down, gets some heat. Gets it away. And it is incomplete. So he didn't want to get sacked, didn't want to waste it, so he threw it away. Now Jim. Keith, it is final in Columbia, Missouri, where Northwestern has beaten the Tigers 27-23. The last time Northwestern was at 500 was 1-1, two games into the 1979 season. They went on that year to finish 1-10. And, and Frank Royal, who once coached in Missouri, is, I'm sure, aware how disappointed the Tiger fans will be at that loss in Woody Woodenhofer's first game. Back to you, Keith. Keith, our congratulations to Dallas Green, the Northwestern coach, who used to work for Bill Walsh at uh, Stanford. Chuck Howard reminds us who beat Northwestern last week. Duke, second down and 10. 
three. Robinson whips it. Good. And it'll be a first down at about the 29 to Jeff Smith. Keith, that was a tremendous throw. It, Robinson was just on his haunches. His arm is so strong. Right there, you see the receiver over to the right, hit you right on the numbers, right in the belt where it can't be intercepted. Took a careful throw, everything perfect. Craig Rutledge jumped up on top of him, rode him down. Uh, he's a big buffalo. He <laughs> wasn't big enough to take him on head up. There's Robinson, number 10. Throw it again. Quickly to the sideline for Swanson. And Swanson's inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 16. And that's another Tennessee first down. The Tennessee offense is picking this UCLA defense apart. And this defense at UCLA did a great job against Robbie Bosco last week at Brigham Young. Got a Bruin hurt on the play. It is James Washington who had made the last tackle, and James comes up limping a little bit. The trainer out to check him, and I think he'll leave the ball game. Four Tennessee receivers now have four catches in the ball game. So uh, Tony's keeping everybody happy. That, that's well, not only that, but keeping them happy. But the main thing is Keith, he is identifying the defense and going to the open receiver. And he's getting, yeah, it won't be long. He'll be approaching 400 yards and not over 400 yards. The way he's going, 21 out of 25. First down, UCLA 16. Contact in the middle. Contact made by Jim Waller on the center, Todd Kirk. And if it, in fact, is against Waller, that'll be the third time that middle guard's been flagged. Once again, Robinson very wisely to, to slow down the pass rush of the opponents. You use a long snap count one time and, a sh and then a very quick count the next, and the defense cannot get the jump. It gives the offensive lineman a chance to get set and protect the passer. UCLA's offside defense. UCLA has been flagged eight times for 43 yards. University of Tennessee, no flags. That's a big difference. <laughs> Mistakes are a facet of the game of football, but you try to eliminate those silly penalties of offside at least. It's a split crew, too. On first and five, gives it away to Wilson. Big hole, and a penalty flag goes down as Wilson gets to the two-yard line. And look out, Tennessee may have just inherited its first flag. Well, that umpire threw that flag 15 feet in the air. <laughs> Makes you think he wanted to call it. Old Tennessee. I guess. Yeah. That's too bad, folks. You had a great drive going. Just so many plays you can execute in college or in pro football. I was amazed last week that San Francisco, the world's champion, had seven turnovers, Keith. It's going to be a 10 yard hole, folks. So it happens at all levels. 10 yards is going to back them up. I didn't go slow this Robinson down unless UCLA gets some rush. But the big thing, the big thing to me that I have not seen in many quarterbacks in my time, the strong arm that Robinson had. Holding, plus the quick 10 field. yard penalty. Offense, repeat the down. When you. First down. Keith, when you combine the rifle arm and the quick feet and the vision that he has, he knows where the receivers are. He's gone to the right man virtually every time, the open receiver. That's a trait that you see very seldom in any quarterback. Washington is back in after a cramp. Keith Davis and Jim Miller, the setbacks. It is Davis. And this time he is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Taylor, inside linebacker. You don't hear much about the linebackers making plays against Tennessee offense, Keith, because it's all east and west and Fulham and a trap here and there and mostly passes. Taylor's been averaging 10 left tackles of all game. Just doesn't get the involvement. They spread them out. Collectively, they, they're not as good as individually, not as good as they are collectively. Second down, and it's close to 16 yards. All just inside the 22. You see uh, Thrown out to Smith, and Smith is caught from behind and run down by 
by Chance Johnson, the outside linebacker there. He's a redshirt freshman from Compton. And so they'll be looking at third and long. Third down, 12. The tight end Smith just breaks in the flat. The ball is right there, perfectly thrown by uh, Robinson. He doesn't back up. He just raises up right the line of scrimmage and hits him. And if Chance does not make the tackle, it's a touchdown. As UCLA was in the blitz, man-to-man -man coverage. It's a pretty heads-up play by that redshirt freshman. It certainly was. He, it, he made a great play to even make the tackle. He's one step behind. It's all he could do. Run it. Davis gets inside the 15, down to about the 14. The ball's right in front of the goal post. And here comes Carlos Revis. It's a good play. Third and real long. You want to be sure and get something. You've moved the length of the field. Where'd you start? On the three-yard line key? Yep. Moved all the way down. It's just hard, hard to keep it all the way, take it all the way in without some mistakes. The old law of percentages comes to, to haunt you before you can get it across the goal line. Carlos Rivez, a junior from Miami, transferred here from UT Chattanooga, has kicked the 49-yarder and the 33-yarder, and the third quarter time expires. We'll be back for the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our local station. David Norrie is warming up on the sidelines for UCLA. He may come into the ball game on the next UCLA offensive series. He started last week against BYU, played the first half. Right now, it is Tennessee trying to stretch its lead to 13 points as Rivez lines up and will try a 31-yard field goal. High snap, but the ball is put down by Sanders, and he's got it. So it's quite a debut for the younger of the Rivez brothers as he has kicked them good from 49, 33, and 31. Tennessee held the ball for the last eight minutes of the third quarter. After falling behind 10 to nothing in the first quarter, Tennessee has scored on five straight possessions and will win the fourth quarter. 14-5-6 to play, and it's 23-10 volunteers. And Rivez kicks off high all the way across the field where it is taken and out of bounds at the 21 by Danny Thompson. Danny made the catch, but momentum carried him out of bounds. As we look at the stats, Tennessee with 19 first downs. That's sensational. Look at the passing yards by Robinson. The total yards, 425. The big play turnovers by UCLA. And UCLA has not been using their great receivers. Sherrod has not caught a pass, I don't believe, since the first quarter. Stevens is in there at quarterback. That stays in. From the 21, first down. Far and Green behind him, and Stevens comes out throwing. Whips it down the middle, and the pass is almost intercepted, almost by Chris White. That would have been his third of the ball game. Michigan uh, beating Notre Dame today, 20 to 12, and that sets up our game for next week. Undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks, ranked 11th in the nation, against the Wolverines of Michigan. It'll be in Columbia. It will be on the air at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Second down and 10. They really have shut the door on Sherrard. They run it with Green, and he dives to about the 27. Well, they had that long drive in which Green was such a force that the offensive line, as you pointed out, just blowing Tennessee out of the way. Then they had the mistake down here, the five-yard movement penalty, yep. and then the pass was intercepted, and Tennessee held the ball for 8.08 and got a field goal to make it a 13-point lead. That'll take a little wind out of you, say. Yes, it turns that momentum and all of that emotion right on Tennessee's side. Third and a long four. They'll go for Gerard, and it's too high. Incomplete. It was deflected, Keith, by the lineman. Now Jim Lampley. Here's one final look at what happened between Michigan and Notre Dame. The Wolverines beating the Irish 20 to 12 at Ann Arbor. And in that football game, Notre Dame's last threat at fourth and 16 was snuffed out very late on an interception by Doug Mallory, whose father, Bill Mallory, finally got a win at Indiana today. Back to you, Keith. Hey, Jimmy. In the punt, Ted Henderson, 30, 44, and 41 on his three previous kicks. And Tim McGee stands back at his 31, waiting for him. He's kicking into the wind. It's high and hanging. And 
coming up for a fair catch all the way at the 42-yard line is Tim McGee. 31-yard punt, Tennessee with a ball, 13-point lead in good field position. Well, they are happy in Ball Town. Ball Navy came in in full force and bright sunshine this morning. Tennessee River runs right down behind the stadium here. A lot of folks come by boat like they do at the University of Washington in Seattle. Wander over to the stadium. From the 42, Robinson rolling it left. Throws it downfield, got a man open, McGee, and he's down at the 20. How he found McGee running to his left, just unbelievable vision by Robinson. McGee goes down and then back out up the, the, the sideline and he just gets lost when Robinson scrambles the distorted secondary has no idea, no clue where to cover the receivers and McGee is wide open. McGee has five catches for 142 yards and I haven't seen a better quarterback performance in, in some time. How about Doug Flutie? That's, well, he reminds me a lot of such a true. dominant Robinson, player. Robinson's not having to come from behind in a terribly dramatic fashion. He was down 10 to nothing, but this is a pretty good performance. It is. Same thing that Doug did. He to the corner! No, out of bounds. It was McGee again, and Tim caught the ball, but he was flying through space and landed out of bounds. Tony Robinson is from Leon High School in Tallahassee, which has produced a lot of great passes, including Jimmy Jordan, uh, who played at Florida State. He came to Tennessee, and Johnny Majors told me I wore the red shirt in his freshman year, but he's afraid he quit. <laughs> and he only <laughs> threw 50 passes in his first two years. But 253 his junior year, and he's starting off in a fantastic, sensational fashion. Second down and 10 from the UCLA 20. Going again. Dives this time and does not get back to the line of scrimmage. They bring him down around the 21. It's Melvin Jackson made the tackle. And let's join Tim for a moment. All right, Keith, you know the Tennessee offense has been making the big plays all day. There's no question that was expected. But the big credit today has to go to Ken Donahue, the defensive coach. He came in this year from Alabama, and what a job he's done. It was an unknown commodity. They didn't think they had the players that had the God-given talent. But these players all day have been playing and running to the football and being aggressive and making the big plays. You know, I, I know one time he said that half of playing defense is wanting to. These players down here on Tennessee today want to, and the defense and Ken Donahue have been the story. Robinson gives the ball to Wilson. Wilson is caught for a yard loss, but it's right, right, right in front of the goal. Right, Keith. That's, <laughs> That's the it. key. That's the key. They want to get three points. A 13 lead to get beat with two touchdowns and two extra points. 16 points, if they're successful, means you have to score twice and go for two on both occasions and make it just the top. Yeah, but how good is this Rivez now? He's kicked three in a row. He's taken the limelight away because of opportunities from John Lee, the UCLA kicker. This will be from 40 yards. Wins at his back. Wind will help him a little bit. He got it. So he has kicked 49, 33, 31, and 40. The Tennessee Volunteers have moved out to a 26 to 10 lead with 11.57 to play. Well, the 94,370 folks, about 370 of them are UCLA boosters. The other 94,000, I think, belong to Tennessee. And their team is sitting on a 16 point lead right now. It's a little surprising to me, frankly. It is to me, Keith. Also, Ron Zook is the de defensive backfield coach and Johnny Majors tells me that he's one of the brightest young men he's ever had. His defensive backs inexperienced have just played great. Bad kick by uh, Carlos Rivez. It goes out of bounds up around the 11-yard line so that'll back him up five yards. He's got the wind at his back now. All he has to do is time it right and unload on it and he'll get it way downfield. ABC's Monday night Football presentation, NFL next Monday night will be Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Steelers opened uh, with a lot of points. And they go against the Cleveland Browns. That is in the AFC Central. And then on Thursday night, 
Uh, we've got the NFC Central for you. The Chicago Bears, who won their opener, and the Minnesota Vikings, who uh, shocked San Francisco with a win in the opener. Kind of nice to have Bud back coaching. It certainly is. One of my favorite friends played for uh, Bud Grant for six years and thinks he's no finer person and, than Bud Grant. What a great coach he is. I guess you can only catch so many fish, huh? <laughs> yeah. And Minnesota beat the 49ers in the first game of Grant coming back. His return has come back in the last week. 28. This time, Revez gets it. All of it. Knocks it into the end zone a yard deep to Bob Garibaldi. And comes out to the 22. Again, Jim. All right, let's quickly update two teams in the top ten. Number two ranked Auburn, that's in UPI, number one in AP. Beat Southern Mississippi 29-18. Jackson 30 carries, 205, two TDs. Temple fell to Penn State, ninth ranked Penn State, winning despite giving up 206 yards rushing to Paul Palmer. Only Ted Brown, Tony Dorsett, and Alan Pinkett ever gained more yards than that against the Nittany Lions. And Bino has a juicy prediction about Penn State, which he'll give us in the postgame show, Keith. A juicy prediction. <laughs> We've got an injured player down on the field. In at quarterback, and to run this offensive series will be David Norrie. But we've got a timeout for an injured UCLA player. Ken Norton was the player shaken up on the play. Walked off the field. Just looked like he had his bell rung a little. Coming from that family, you ought to know something about that. Taking a lick. Daddy was heavyweight champion. All right. David Norrie is in for his first snap of the ball game on first down from about the 22. And David back to throw. Gets it away to the sideline. Sherrard makes the catch for a first down up around the 42-yard line. Norrie, 6'5", 210, fifth-year senior from Portland, Oregon. Here's Tim. Keith, you mentioned that Ken Norton, the son of the former heavyweight champ, Ken Norton, was injured on that play. They're working on his hip. It looks like a hip pointer. And he's really in a lot of pain. You know how that is. That could keep you out a while. But he is a sophomore inside linebacker. He's, his expectations here at UCLA are high. He's going to be a good one, I think. Get that from his dad. You're right. I hate to see that hip pointer, though. That's a painful injury. 41-yard line. First down. Norrie gives the ball away. No, keeps it. Whips it. Sidearm to the sideline. The pass is completed. Up at the 46 to Al Wilson. Number 88. David Norrie was the third team quarterback last year for UCLA. Had seven completions out of 17 attempts. One interception and no touchdowns. He's only thrown 19 passes in his career, 42% completion average. Last week, he was 6 out of 11, but only for 29 yards. It's second down and four, picked up six on that play. Run for it with Green. Gaston Green has that faculty for slashing for the extra yard and gets the first down. Here's Jim. At Provo, Utah, Brigham Young appears to be out of danger against Washington as the Cougars lead the Huskies 24-3 in the fourth quarter. Interesting note, BYU has gone the whole game without having Bosco throw a touchdown pass, and they haven't gone an entire game without throwing a touchdown pass since 1981 against Hawaii. Back to you, Keith. Lavelle Edwards is some offensive coach. What a great record he's made at uh, Brigham Young. Kind of beat himself, too, against UCLA with five turnovers here. Again, Norris looping that ball to the sidelines to Durrell, and now he's moving the Bruins in a hurry. You've got 10 minutes and 41 seconds to play in the football game. They're down by 16 points. They have a first down at the Tennessee 36. Tennessee continues to stay in a running defense. Single coverage their receivers have given them the little short pass, and Norris has been right on target on three successive attempts, making the first down. on the receivers. Going big for it. And it is thrown too far incomplete. Pass is intended for number 81, Derek Fennell. And Dale Jones, outside linebacker, trying to stay with him. Did a good enough job, certainly. There's Johnny Majors, All-American at Tennessee. I was coaching at Georgia Tech when they defeated us in that great battle in Atlanta, six to nothing, went on to have an undefeated season. All-American on everybody's team. 
coached for me for a few years, and he was a perfectionist as a coach, just like he was as a player. Second and ten for UCLA. Norris straight back. He gets some pressure on him. He gets it out here. The pass is caught by the fullback, Mel Farr. But Farr is just buried well short of the line of scrimmage. And here's Tim again. I have an update for you on Ken Norton, Jr. It is not a hip corner. I just talked to the doctors. They said he took a pretty vicious shot to the side, but they really feel he's going to be okay. Now they don't suspect the hip corner. That's good news. I'm sure Dad's watching back home. The loss is back to the 44 of Tennessee. Well, that's a loss of eight yards. One of the shortcomings of Nori, the quarterback, he's not very agile. Doesn't have any foot speed to really dodge the rush. Third and about 18. Overthrows it. It's intercepted by Chris White, his third of the day. White's got some help coming back upfield. All the way to the 39. Keith, that ball wasn't even spiraling. Looked like he was twirling through the air. Well, what happened? about to substitute White, who has three interceptions. Only plays he had made was on the special team before today. Live today Chevrolet with Cavalier. Fly the coop, pop the top, the look is trim, built my top, has the road rolls on. Today's Cavalier has the electronic fuel-injected power and front drive you're looking for. Plus an interior that comforts your very soul. Now low 7.7% financing on new 1985 Chevy Cavaliers. Drive today Chevy, live today Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Last year, history's biggest run took place. The Five Mile Stroh's Run for Liberty. This year's run will be even bigger. It's in 127 cities, and it's sponsored by Stroh's, with support from the Plymouth Division of Chrysler. Your entry fee will help restore the statue. And even if you walk, you'll get a metal cast from materials used to build her a century ago. Enter at participating Chrysler Plymouth dealers, or wherever you buy Stroh's. Then join us, for her sake. Coming off today's big victory over Notre Dame, Michigan tangles with 11th ranked South Carolina next Saturday on CFA College Football. So Tennessee owns the football first down at their own 39, leading 26 to 10. UCLA, unless they have some real thunder and lightning here, going to go one and one on opening successively on the road. They have San Diego State at home September 21 open the conference September 28 at Seattle against Washington. Tennessee gives the ball to Davis. Davis is thrown down right at the 40 for a yard pickup. Tennessee will take a week off now and uh, get ready for Auburn. The Tigers are coming into Knoxville on September 28. That'll open the SEC play for those for those two teams. And the way it looks right now that could be a whale of a football game. Woo. Oh, that should be a great game with Bo Jackson on one side, who's a potential Heisman Trophy winner, and who can discount the performance of Tony Robinson today. If he keep this up, he's got to be a Heisman Trophy candidate. We can have one of the most exciting games we can do that with the old boy. Very popular. <laughs> Break it up the middle. The fullback Jim Miller, a junior from Nashville, brought down by Terry Toomey. First down falls. The ball comes down. <laughs> Let's see where they've marked it. Down at the 47 of UCLA. Here's Tim. All right, Keith, we were talking about that defensive spirit down here on the Tennessee sideline. One of the truly great stories has to be the senior defensive back, Chris White. In his first start, three interceptions, and of course it was the injury to Charles Davis that allowed him to get that start today. He wasn't even sure prior to the game if he would start, but he comes in, three interceptions, the whole team now rallying behind him. You can see him gathering as the coach talks to the defense. He indeed has been some incentive for this rubber band defense that has stretched, but will not let him score and break it. Yeah, got to have a Walter Mitty every Saturday. <laughs> Well, it's great that it happened to a senior uh, who had just played on the special teams and, and not really had a significant role in his, in his team, but today he's the hero, along with many other Tennessee players. 
You know, you know the, the marvelous thing about college football is a day like this. Now, whether Chris White ever plays a day after he leaves Tennessee, he has had a day to remember, and people are going to remember Chris White, and it'll be something that'll last him the rest of his life. That's the wonder and marvel of college football to me. On the ground, pounding away with it is Charles Wilson. And Tennessee now would love to run the ball as much as possible to keep that clock moving. And stay in the huddle as long as they possibly can without getting a penalty. But back to Charles White, Keith. Johnny Majors does what most of us do, I'm sure, is give the team ball to some player who had a significant role in the victory. And I would just wager that Charles White will Chris get White. that. I mean, Chris White will get that ball autographed by all of his teammates who put in his den for the rest of his life. Third down and six and a half. Tony Robinson shoots it over the middle, and it is short of the first down. And making the catch is Charles Wilson, but making the hit is James Washington for UCLA. So it'll bring up a fourth down. Timeout is called, stopping the clock now with six minutes and 52 seconds to play in the game. Well, Smokey, the uh, blue tick hound mascot, satisfied with the way things are, so he's having a nap. It is fourth down, two yards plus, and they're going for it. Oh, they just going to try to draw them all. Penalty and put the ball. It's academic to five yards. Yeah. <laughs> they sat there for a good 30 seconds and eyeballed each other and nobody moved. <laughs> now in comes Garmin to do the punting. Garmin has punted only one time today. One time. Well, this is the first possession that Tennessee hasn't scored on in six. Six consecutive unanswered scores by the Tennessee Volunteers. A little bit different style of play than what we used to see at Tennessee with the old single wing. Gifford Urban is deep for UCLA. Block is on, Keith. Going after tennis. Best chance. Gets it out. that when everything's going right you just don't worry about it just ride the roll and they have killed the ball inside the five down literally well they're going to mark it out a little bit from the goal line by out to about the three with UCLA safety was, that? was somebody really hustled down there to get that ball out of the end zone keep it from going in then the, about three of them yet yeah, 25 is going to really and he's close to the goal line there. It's the first man. I couldn't see his number. Well, UCLA is 97 yards away from the Tennessee goal line, trailing by 16 points, 638 to play. And the David Norrie is in at quarterback. Throws to Terrell and misses far. Through behind him. South Carolina, Michigan, from Columbia. We'll have about 75,000 folks in Columbia next week. And they are wound up about their football team down there now. I guess Mike Hold is the starting quarterback this year for South Carolina. Yeah, he's still rotating. Is he? Is he? Uh -huh. Mitchell and, and, and Hold. Joe Morrison, he's turned that program around as fast and as quick as anybody has been in college football. Second down and ten from their three. Norrie out of his end zone. Goes down the middle with it, and the pass is too high. Gerard got a hand on it, could not haul it down. Again, Jim. Brief visit to the world of horse racing, Keith. Many of you will remember Chief's crown as the winless betting favorite in all three Triple Crown races. Today, he followed his Traverse Stakes win with a victory in the Marlboro Cup, paying $23 to win. Gate Dancer second, Van Landingham third. Good ride for Don McBeth up on Chief's crown as Chief's crown at Belmont won the Marlboro Cup. Keith? Third and ten. down there with 94,000 folks on it.
before he lets it go. Sherrard in a foot race and a great catch by Sherrard. He had two people there and he pulled the ball down. Chris White and Victor Peppers were with him, but he just went higher. Sherrard is such a great receiver. Concentration. He just runs along at the last minute at the proper time. He goes up and catches the ball. Peppers, number eight, just couldn't stay with him. And White is coming across, number seven. But Sherrod had that body control and came down with it. Five catches for Mike, 95 yards. First down, UCLA. Out of the shotgun now. Snap from their own 48. Pass thrown to the sidelines and incomplete the penalty flag. And you may have interference called here. With that force of yours, you're going to be a non-factor <laughs> when the Hogs play the Rebels tonight, I can tell you that. Well, I'm looking forward to being there tonight in Jackson, Mississippi. I'll be yelling either way. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't. So, <clears throat> Sherrod has had such a fantastic career at uh, UCLA. 48 receptions in 83, 43 receptions. Jim Welch is a man that gets flagged here for Tennessee. Sherrod just goes Passing down and there. breaks out. Defense. Oh, it's Anderson. Anderson. Willie Anderson. Anderson. Willie Anderson, yes. And... The back, Welch, makes contact before the ball is there, interfering with the ability to get, with the opportunity to catch the ball. Out of the shotgun on first down from the Tennessee 41. Norrie takes off up the middle and picks up a first down. His advance will be to the 30. There's a penalty flag. It's going against Tennessee, and that's going to help the Bruins. You've got 5.55 to play, 26-10, Tennessee leads. But I would never go past the old yogiism. Ain't over until it's over. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, the Tennessee's getting a few bad breaks now, late in the ball game. Seems that's the way it goes sometimes. You get a big lead, and the mistakes start making mistakes. Five-yard face mask penalty defense. Throws the ball to the 25 where it's first down UCLA. Gaston Green. Out about four. Excellent pursuit by the Tennessee defense. Montreal defeats the New York Mets 5-1. Mets boot the ball four times. Palmer beats Fernandez. St. Louis in the ninth over Chicago. So the Cardinals will pick up a game if they hold on to the win. I'm into the lead. Second down, six. Murray, real good protection. Now he has to run out of it. And struggles to about the 17, 18. Make it the 18. No huddle. The signal offense that we that Tim Brandt talked about before the ball game. Now the timeout. Tennessee. Well, I would imagine the Tennessee defense wants to talk. They have been so strong for two and a half quarters, and now they've grown a little permissive. We'll sum up the day for you following today's ball game. Jim and Bino and Doug. Some games tonight. Third down for UCLA and three yards for the first down. Gaston Green has the first down. And he's inside the 10, close to the 8, before they finally put him on the ground. Lavoisier Fisher and Dale Jones finally wrestling down. Green now, 180 yards, his career high running, marked by the 72-yard touchdown sprint. Kickoff returns for 46. He had a pretty good day himself. He's a brilliant young runner, just a sophomore. Has that speed, the balance, the power. Moves, does it all, as those numbers reflect. All at the eight. Crowd is not helping Dave Norrie. Keeps it. Looks down into the end zone. Touchdown for UCLA to Al Wilson. to go for two. 
Wilson, number 88, is, will break all the way across the middle. And the defensive secondary leaves him alone. One's playing man, and the other defensive back is playing zone. When you cross at the goal line, you give the defense a chance to make a mistake, and that's what's happened. So let's get the two. Get the two. Well, if they make two, it'll be 26-18, and then if they can get the ball back and score and make two again, making two successive two-point conversions, odds are not good in college for the season for every division one two and three team is about 40 percent yeah but that's just time not successively he's open he's got it busted defense by the Tennessee. Second they went to sleep on that corner and jeff nowinski the tight end pulls in the two-point conversion pass and that's what you've got now at eight point difference in the ball game look how wide open he is somebody really busted their assignment or wouldn't it be the left corner left corner should have stayed back on the fake he can't be up there tackling the run he's got to play pass first 446 to play in the game and still a lot of time jim all right, Keith, here's another story. In pregame, we brought you up to date on the recovery of Ed Reinhardt, the University of Colorado tight end who was injured a year ago, received a severe brain concussion, was in a coma for more than two months. Reinhardt was honored today in Ed Reinhardt Day ceremonies at Boulder and in the rematch between Colorado and Oregon, Oregon the team against which Reinhardt was hurt a year ago in Eugene. Colorado scored an emotional victory, holding off the Ducks on a threat from the nine-yard line in the final minute of the game to win before Reinhardt and his family, 21 to 17. Keith? Hey, Jimmy, thank you. I'm glad that young man is coming around. He's gaining yes. a little bit every day. Well, now, will they try an onside, onside kick, kick? Or will they take the chance on their defense, stop it? Well, right. Still 446. I'd kick it down the beat. Yep, try to kick it over the end zone, start them on the 20. Take the defense. They kick it high. It's not too deep. Goes back to McGee at the six. He didn't get it. Well, Keith, what he did, he afraid he might fumble the ball, and so he just puts his knee on the ground. No chance to fumble. I don't know why that his reaction was that way, but he said to himself, if I get hit, I may fumble. I don't want to do that. So he put his knee on the ground, killed the ball before the contact. At the 13-yard line, though. Well, we used to do that on the last 15 seconds. We've intercepted a pass. We'd say, don't run with that ball late in the game. Put your knee on the ground, then run with it. Yeah, well, but you got 442 yeah. to play in this one. And McGee's a good runner, and uh, I, I'm a little surprised that he did that. Robinson comes up 24 out of 33 for 381 yards, his career high, and two touchdowns. And he's got it, and he's going to throw it. No, he's not. He's going to run it. And he dives across the 20 and gets out to the 21. Well, Robinson has broke containment of the outside defense of UCLA virtually every time, Keith. That's amazing that he can just get outside of that containment and then run a throw whichever he chooses. There is numbers. 72% completion. Billy the uh, three. ball is actually almost touching the 20, just over the 20. So it's second down and close to three. off to Wilson no not Wilson Davis and Davis does not get the first down you can be assured that in the huddle they have cost you in the backs to protect that football as we look at the defense the staff of Tennessee yeah but if they don't get they don't make it on third and a long one here they got to give UCLA back the ball with three and a half minutes to play and a very young defense and UCLA came from behind in the last two minutes moving 82 yards to beat Brigham Young. So they believe that they can do it. Confidence. You got Miller in there at fullback. They give it to Wilson, and Wilson's got the first down. Biggest play of the, of the ball game so far, right there. It was a big play to keep the ball away from UCLA. Good Watch block. Hit here. Watch the tackle now at the end of this tackle by Washington. 
Washington is from that breed that they say like Easley and Rogers. You know the shiver? That's a great tackle. He's tough. 119 stops last year as a freshman. Wasn't what I asked you. Oh, wasn't that a shiver? A shiver with a, that right upside the head. That's that can be a penalty. You cannot tackle with your arm. It was the elbow Good in the ear that was the bother. Ball is tipped in the air, and Robinson comes over and knocks it down. That thing could have been picked off. In fact, there was a UCLA man in the neighborhood. Melvin Jackson tipped it up, and Tony Robinson, realizing it might have been intercepted, knocked the thing on the ground. Well, that's the presence of mind of a senior, young man who's been back there in that pocket a lot of times. The receiver's open, but the defender knocks it up in the air. Now, watch this. This is something. Yeah, but Batchkoff is going right for it. He's see? dunking it. He's dunking it right there. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want it. Might fumble if he'd caught it. Did well, the smart uh, thing. He had a 245-pounder with red eyes coming at him, too. He would have taken some punishment. That does stop the clock. Incomplete pass stops the clock. Something the Tennessee doesn't really want to do if they keep from it. Second down and 10. Bill changed the play at the line. Numbers game. Davis. Good blocking on the left side but good reaction by the UCLA Packers and Melvin Jackson and James Washington come up to get him in a hurry. Washington came close to stripping the ball right out of his hands. He went for the ball, which is what you're supposed to do at this late stage of the ball game. Washington put his head, get his arm right on it, but couldn't knock it loose. Two, 20, and counting. Third down and seven, Tennessee. Just beyond their own 32. Third and seven. Will they throw? I think they will. Luke Lang, get out of there. Nope. They give it off to the tailback, Wilson. And Wilson is decked at the 34, and you're looking at fourth and long now. And Tennessee's going to have to punt. UCLA stops the clock, stopping it at 1.53 to play in the game. Timeouts remaining. UCLA has one. Tennessee has two. And Tennessee has an eight-point lead. In comes the punter, Garmin. Deep goes Gifford Urban for UCLA. 153 to play. Lock is owned by UCLA. Joel Farmer snaps it. Good snap. Kick is away. Urban at the 25, down at the 27. Joel Farmer, the man who snapped it, the man who makes the tackle. It was a 40-yard punt by Garmin and a one-yard return. Now the Tennessee defense got to make up their mind. They don't want to play a prevent, but they don't want to give the easy touchdown either with Gerard, Tennell, and Darrell, three great receivers. UCLA a forever dangerous. Dale Jones, the linebacker, trying to get the crowd into it, waving his arms and come on, make some noise. 94, almost 95,000 of you. And out of the shotgun, Dave Norrie drops the throw. Dumps it off to Gaston Green out of the backfield and he can't get it down. The ball was thrown behind him a little bit. I don't know if Tony Robinson will see the ball anymore today, but if he does, he's got a chance to beat Bobby Scott's record. Set back in 1970, Robinson has 381 yards. Total offense today, he is just four short of Bobby Scott's record. Dewey Warren was the quarterback for Tennessee in that 37 and 34 game. He had a fantastic game, similar to what Tommy, Tony Robinson did today. Swamp Rats, an assistant coach up at 20. <laughs> This time, uh, the ball is delivered to Gaston Green where he can catch it, and he does catch it for about eight yards, maybe seven. They marked him at the 33. Tennessee's trying to keep the quarterback in the pocket, rushing from the outside, keeping two men up the middle, trying to put a little pressure on him. Making a six-yard pickup, third down and four. Third and four. Give it to Primus. And Primus is knocked out of bounds. Close. 
The chains are all the way across the field. And they're going to bring him across, I think, here. Oh, he makes the he's first pass. I, yeah. I think he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he does. Tennessee now has called, I thought they'd called a timeout, but I guess not. So they still have two. UCLA with one. Time remaining, one minute, 26 seconds. 26, 18, score. going under center rolls this one out gets the pressure sucking hey throws the ball a pass is caught how about that the big guy from portland oregon was on his way down and saw a man and threw the ball to mike sherrard and sherrard made the catch close to a first down dale jones had a hold of him and had him on the way down look at this the quarterbacks are taught to throw that ball if they can Anything to avoid the loss. That's stuff they work on every day. But look at that one-handed catch by Sherrod. He makes a nice gain out of it. They're going to bring the chains in. They want to know exactly how far they have to go. They do not have the first down, but they want to know precisely how much they need. With one timeout left, they don't really need to be running the football at all. Well, he needs, what, a half a yard? Half a yard. This is, this is the college football scoreboard coming up next. This is just what UCLA did last week. Coming from behind in the last two minutes to win the ball game. So they believe they can do it. There's a confidence level out there. You can see it. Second down, half a yard. They've got Green and Greenwood in the lineup. They're going to waste a lot of time on the run here. Big and they're going to run it. Well, they're going to run it pretty well. Get out of bounds. And Gaston Green blows it over the left side and goes down to about the Tennessee 41 and gets out of bounds, killing the clock with 101 to play. Last week, it looked like it was impossible for UCLA to beat Brigham Young. They were trailing with two minutes to play. Got the ball on the old 18-yard line. They scored and won the game. Well, they played a 17-17 tie here one time in Knoxville. But, uh, I did it. I remember. Tennessee has not lined up properly. They're having a hard time getting adjusted. Now they're good shape. Norris still got it. He missed the handoff, Keith. And he's going to go out of bounds. Knocked out back around the 46. He had an off-tackle play called and just couldn't get to uh, Green on the handoff and had to keep it. I don't know how the blocking was. I didn't see, but there's the score. Eight points from a tie and the time. 54 seconds. Loss on the play from the 41 back to the 46. Back to the shotgun. Second down and 15. Across the field, Sherrard got it out of bounds. Was first a, down at the 27 of Tennessee. There's an old saying, threading the needle. And that's exactly what happens here. As Dory throws the ball right in between the defenders, in front of one, behind the other, and inside of the third man. Three of them around Sherrard, they couldn't get to it. Sherrard now seven catches, 124 yards. 49 seconds to play. First down. Just inside the 27. Here's the blitz. Give it a green. Through the 25. Two yards. Victor Peppers, the right corner, came up to support on that side and did the job. And you've got timeout called by UCLA. That is their last one. You have 43 seconds to play. Uh, that picture tells you everything you need to know. Except it is second down and eight. And the home crowd is getting all over UCLA here, making it as tough as possible. Now they force Norrie into his hand signals. And out of the shotgun. Goes for the corner. Touchdown! Sherrard! Willie Anderson! Willie Anderson! 83 made the catch! Can you believe it? 
with 37 seconds to play. And here comes your two-point play for a tie. Last time, Tennessee busted their defense, and it was an easy, easy, successful pass for the two points. Willie Anderson, 83, comes up with the biggest catch of his life in the corner of the end zone over Victor Peppers. And here comes the two-point play for the tie. They give it to Gaston Green. He's in there. They run the ball and tie it up. 26, 26. There's not much you can say except give tremendous credit to that UCLA team for not giving up, putting forth the effort. They did it last week and they've done it again. Here's the touchdown. Anderson just runs a fly pattern. Tennessee was trying to blitz, have man-for-man -man covered. Peppers, number eight, is beaten by one step, and the ball is right on target. Here's another view from behind the quarterback. Takes a perfect throw. Peppers, number eight, is got pretty good position. Just one step. And Anderson, number 83, just goes up, plays his body, hands, coordination, eye contact, everything. Now the two-point conversion. And this was a surprise call to me. Well, Sherrod wasn't in the ball game, so you should kind of get the idea that maybe they were going to run the ball. The blocking was there. Fullback making the key block on the cornerback, but the speed of Green takes it in for the two-point play. So when Tennessee seemingly had it in hand, 26 to 10 in the fourth quarter, the Bruins have come bang bang for two touchdowns and successive two-point conversions, and the crowd of 94,000 is quiet. The 370 Bruin rooters are loud. And here's the kickoff by Bray. Kicks it deep. Why not the onside kick here? The return comes out to about the 22-yard line by Pete Panuska. Well, anything can happen, Keith. I've seen it all, really. Two timeouts for Tennessee. 30 seconds. Let's see what Robinson can do. If he had about a minute and a half, you have tough. a problem. Yeah. yeah. With Rivers in the range, and uh, Rivers would have the wind at his back. He would have the wind at his back. UCLA now is going to go into deep contain. But Georgia got burned on that deep prevent, didn't they? Yes, they did. We've seen some comebacks this no, year. They're not in that deep contain either. They're right up there. Now you got one man dropping deep, Washington. And Tony Robinson back to throw it. Gets away from one, pulls it down, takes off to the sidelines, and gets a first down. It's according yeah, to where they mark it. Depends team. on the mark. They hadn't stopped the clock yet. They're letting the clock run. No, nope, not a first down. Well, they got the measure. I think they called it. Nope, but Tennessee took the timeout. Well, they got ran it all the way down to 18 seconds. Now they're going to measure. They need to hit. They need to hit one big pass to get him in range. Now I don't frankly know what his range is. He's hit one from 49 today, and he hit that one from 49 into the wind. Now you might give him a shot at a 55-yarder, and with the help of the wind, who knows? Well, he was kicking before the game 55 yarders, nearly up to 60. I was watching him. And it, Tennessee has one timeout remaining. It's a 60-minute game, isn't it, Coach? Yes, it is. College football. The passing game, Keith, is revolutionized and made, made everything pretty even in college. Anybody can win on any given day. The flag show, uh, the wind going the other way, but I was, they were blowing that way yesterday afternoon, but the flags are going to the right, but the wind whirling around in this huge bowl is going to the left. But uh, that's down the road. Right now, Tony Robinson and company have 18 seconds to get the ball down within some reasonable range for the field goal try. One of the great comebacks you'll ever see by UCLA. And Tennessee seemingly had it in hand.
Johnson under pressure, gets it away and throws it away. Didn't have anybody. And Tim McGee, I'll guarantee you, drew a crowd that time. I'd be watching Tim, Tim McGee with about two, maybe three men on him. There's Robinson. 11 seconds to play. That pass took seven seconds, so he's got to he's got to hit something down that middle or deep on the boundary and step out of bounds. And UCLA is not playing a victory defense. They are up there playing their regular defense that they played all game. This part, player tumbles out of bounds. That's yeah, Wilson out of the clock. backfield. That stopped it. That stopped it. No, it didn't stop. Didn't stop. Did he knock him out of bounds? Game's over. Looks like a Game's over. He, they rule him down. He did not stop the clock as he went to the turf, and the game is over sort of an anticlimactic way to end the ball game perhaps but UCLA down 26 to 10 in the fourth quarter comes storming back with two touchdowns and two successive point conversions to win it uh, to tie it 26 26 yeah, that's one they'll talk about a long time this ABC sports exclusive has been brought to you by Strohs and Strohlite the circle of sports beer by GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. By Castro Oil, motor oil the engineered for today's high performance four and six cylinder engines. And by Honda Power Equipment, lawnmowers, lawn tractors, and portable generators made easy and made to last. Once again, your final score, UCLA 26, Tennessee 26. Stay tuned now for updated highlights and scores of today's football action on College Football School Board. Travel arrangements made through at promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong for more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Thank you.